Hi everybody, welcome to FNS Wrestling Podcast, episode 156. We're back down in the basement on our third anniversary of this podcast, right? I think that's technically what That's how that math works. And my co-host and teenage son Jack is across the table listening to the theme of Vincent, oh my god, what's his group called? The Righteous. Look at that, there you go. Nailed it. I, it I, it's funny because I do like that theme as well. Yeah, I was just trying to find it. It, it suits fairly him. easy to find. Yeah, so they're... Where are they located? They're in ROH land right now, right? Yeah, with Stu Grayson. With Stu, oh, that's right. Stu Grayson has joined their rank. Some, somewhat. Somewhat. He still looks just like Dark Order, but... Yeah, and they're always billed, I noticed, as the Righteous and Stu Grayson, so... Are they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. It's funny because we were just talking Dark Order before this to you pointed me in the direction of a promo that will come up later probably for us yeah from ron page as they say mm-hmm. so yeah um yeah it is our third anniversary show and we didn't do anything special but we're planning something we i think finally yeah, I made think a decision it is i know because also my birthday is next thursday i think and we started just before oh, that's weird i you honestly turned forgot 14. my birthday is on thursday just before you turned 13 yeah so right. that I, I remember that was in the original layout. So it, we're going to basically add some content, I think, is our plan going forward. Because I we've don't been, remember the last time we have. No, and we've been talking about it for a while. So you go ahead and tell them mm-hmm. uh, what it is. Um, so it'll, it'll kind of reach a point where it's interesting because it's something we've kind of already done, if you think about it. What? Well, um, Right? Okay. If you think, right? Yeah, yeah. We have done. True. So we wanted to kind of go back and to good NXT uh nxt that i don't dislike or and or hate with a burning fiery passion because it was the best thing in wrestling for uh, yeah. me and, and 2.0 you probably... hurt me on a personal level it did you took that hard um so we're thinking of like doing what every other week ish i think every other week yeah we'll, we we'll try in. to keep a somewhat steady pace yep. um just kind of whenever we can and we'll review old nxt uh starting from we're thinking nxt arrival which was the first show aired on the network and that was like kind of like the precursor yeah to take over i think that's a good starting point that'll start like the yeah that'll be the good starting point because that'll be like the zane owens balor era hour episodes to start our episodes yeah our our episodes are in until like 2019 so oh sweet years until then yeah so so that'll uh... encompass like eventually like it'll get to like balor and joe and yeah. nakamura and all that and then obviously eventually we'll reach the point like 2020 2021 nxt where we've already reviewed that but that was a while ago so I yeah mean, it'll still be interesting and i think we'll do takeovers too because that'll be interesting and they're all awesome so why it's not like it's a chore yeah so like when like we'll watch all the weekly ones and then when we hit a takeover that's the one we do that week or whatever you know yeah i, I mean? think we'll probably slip those in yeah it so, sounds fun um just interesting more content for us to put out there not sure what day of the week we'll release it but we'll try and be pretty regular once we commit to doing it it's something we've been sort of bouncing around uh i may even get you to do it on video at some point because i'm ready to i don't know with some new devices i got we ready to throw I, I would give you approval i wouldn't post it anywhere without you going okay i'm fine to post it but i could at least practice doing it yeah and give you like listen i don't love the idea either but that's the way things work yeah if we're looking to grow this a little <clears> bit um i was even thinking i might i might take control of a threads and and run a threads for the podcast really yeah actually i, I would i don't mind it like that's like seems a lot easier because than... you could i don't want to do twitter yeah and... it's basically twitter though i can hook it up to the the instagram one yeah so, exactly cause... can i have access to it somehow on my phone or do i have to have instagram yeah okay well we'll figure it out because i it's well, something... I can share access because I've done that with uh, Hancock before. When we the idea of thing. getting in on something on the ground floor like threads is kind of interesting to me. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. mind doing that too. Okay, but you got to be a little more active on it than you are on your Instagram. I don't for have the... threads. Oh, I know, but like then you are on the Instagram for the website. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm remembering that. Sorry. Uh, but anyways, this is all stuff. So yesterday we had a good day, yeah? Mm-hmm. So we live within, what, an hour of... I, I, I'm pretty sure it's the best theme park in Canada. I don't know if only one anyone knows someone can correct me if i'm wrong but um so canada's wonderland (laughs) which is a full-on theme park with a a ton of roller coasters ranging from like small ones for kids to ridiculous ones where you feel like you may yeah (laughs) you've been on some you've been on some of the huge ones there so and there's also a full-on water park with tons of water slides and stuff so it was like a very hot day here (laughs) yesterday and we went with you me your mother and five 
teenagers basically we'll say right i would guess and then so you and your friend took off on your own and did whatever you wanted to and we mm-hmm. kind of stayed close to the younger ones but yeah it was good yeah and i made questionable decisions you did you, you realized the whole like eating too much junk drinking too much junk and getting on giant rides makes you feel not like you you battled through no problem but you weren't peak you for sure no. at the end of by the end well it's a long Definitely day not. we put in eight hours in the park yeah and so that means like 10 hours with driving right? yeah basically and then went to Most sort of, of a day, yeah. a street party pool party, party down the street yeah. so uh, it was a really good day though that's a good <laughs> summer day so yeah. um was nice to do something fun but anyways i don't know what else to we bantered quite a bit you ready uh, to get into yeah, wrestling i don't think there's much it's a else. standard episode this week there's no pay-per-views to review or preview i will run down the final card of slammiversary but it's not worth no previewing because like, you I'm don't not, even know impact watch it. <laughs> i know and you don't I actually i saw the whole card graphic so i did i saw what's on it but i don't really but care. yeah so we'll review aew dynamite in depth um as we always do. And then again, we'll touch on Impact and NXT and some main roster highlights and lowlights, right? I think all that stuff. Trivia in the middle somewhere. And then you said there is no figure update this week? I don't think so. So we'll revisit that next week again. But I say we get started. Uh, mm-hmm. First thing we do every week after bantering is talking about some of the week's wrestling news and rumors. <laughs> All right, ratings time. As I hear Vincent's theme playing quietly in the background. <laughs> um, NXT this week, 671,000 viewers up 32%. Is that right? Or did mm, I not? I don't know. Does this feel like the same as last week? I might have to revisit and see <laughs> if I didn't update theirs. Um, and then earned a 0. .20 in the key demographic, up 59.3. Um, so evidence that, oh no, this is this week's because this is the third highest viewership of 2023. And I asked the question here, which is what I think proves that it is this week, right? That certain acts coming from the main roster moved the needle. Mm-hmm. So you had Rollins uh, coming to face Breaker, and that got big numbers for them. And this week it was... Dana ju- Brooke. <laughs> yeah, well played. Definitely Dana Brooke. Uh, ju- Judgment Day. Um, so those are big numbers. Oh, yeah, they, they might have helped too. Like almost 700,000, which is the number for them that's excellent. And like up 32%, up 60% basically. So big numbers for them collision i'm still tracking it i don't know why 580,000 so up quite a bit 28.3 percent and a 0.21 which is up 61 and a half Mm -hmm. so this actually had punk in action in the main event right defeating samoa joe finally in in the semifinals of the owen hart uh tournament semifinals already it must have been wow right and it again not a huge tournament (laughs) which we'll circle back around to later i don't want to spoil anything in my news i think you won't have to wait long for it you might already know but i thought it was funny based on conversations we've already had should, um so maybe punk helps the ratings when he's actually in action who knows but but good numbers for them this mm-hmm. week i think nice and dynamite was eight hundred twenty-five thousand viewers down a little bit 3.5 and earned a 0.29 which is the same as last week so i would say they're pretty much holding steady all right all right, news. I actually like my news. Okay. Newses? My news is um, this week. Speaking of Collision, or rather, after Collision, okay. uh, Battle of the Belt 7 is tonight. I heard. Um, uh, would you like to guess the three title matches? I'll give you the titles online as to see, so we, okay. we're not completely blind. Okay. So we have the TNT title, the women's title, the main one, and the international title. Okay, so TNT title is currently Wardlow. Mm-mm. You Ooh. forgot. Oh, sorry, Luchasaurus. Yes. Okay, so it's Luchasaurus, Tony Storm, and Cassie. Luchasaurus think, is. Uh, it's. I don't. It's. You gotta think pretty obscure, like or not like not insanely obscure, because obviously it's like a specialist, but like someone you don't see much. Someone I don't see. Lance Archer. Uh, no, but like he's. Is it a? Is it a big person? Can you give me that. What do you mean, like stature? No. Okay. Like I like regular stature, and he is of our nation. Canadian, yeah, good Canadian boy. Yeah, well, not Jericho, because you would no. look. You look like you're vaguely happy about it. So no, I just I don't think you'll get it. Canadian, and like he doesn't do a whole lot nowadays. Who he used to be really popular in WWE? He was really popular. I don't know. Oh, um, ten. Yeah. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Sean Spears. Spears. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. Um, because then... 
I don't know. Because I don't reasons? Know. I, I don't watch Collision. <laughs> right. That's um, funny. And then so we have Storm <laughs> defending against uh, blank. Sky Blue. No. Also Canadian. I think technically. Technically. Um, Taya? And, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, so that could be easy. And then Orange Cassidy versus you or already kind of got it. Lance Archer? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's about the best I've ever guessed anything on this. Yeah. Maybe in and three years of this. So Archer's doing another job, I guess. I guess I so, right? At least it's a this different is... type of opponent for Cassidy At a little bit. At least it's a different title for Archer, too. <laughs> guess, he mostly yeah. does jobs to the champ. I think what he jobbed to Moxley. We need a big man to lose here. I think Moxley lost to Moxley for the title. Oh, he dropped to Moxley and Hangman. But he had a couple matches we really liked, right? The Hangman one was the Texas Death. That was good. He had a Texas Death with Moxley at some point, too. Yeah, they were fun. Like, he's yeah. good. They just don't they ever don't use him. Them. So And he's been in Japan and whatever. Right. Doing other things. Yeah. Um. So, former AEW talent. Did you see this? Brian Pillman Jr. Damn was it. at the Performance Center. Did I steal yeah. one of yours? Yeah. Nice. Um. So, he was training at the PC obviously following his departure from AEW, didn't say anything about his official status, but you know, WWE, any opportunity they can say second or third generation superstar, they will I don't, I jump do at that chance. I agree with that, but then the thing is, this would be like if they took an Owen Hart son, it's like a tricky thing for them to mention Pillman or Owen Hart. Right. Like, it's true. Cause they so don't, that's the thing. They right? do, that was the only thing I thought. They of. are very cognizant of people Googling stuff. Right. right? So if they people start Googling Brian Pillman, right? WWE, Especially when he has the literal same name as right. his father. We'll see if that's enough right. to cancel so, like, out. Obviously, the, he's the second generation stuff. They, they love it. They do love but that. But he's a Pillman. Yes. So. The, anyone researching it might open up some darkness a little bit. Right. They'd rather right. not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I told you, final card for Slammiversary, which is tonight, correct? I yeah. believe the 15th. That's today. I'll just watch Battle of the Belts. You ready? So <laughs> it's Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards versus Kazarian and Tracy Brooks. No, I think it's just a singles when they're at ringside. Is, oh, it's just with them. Yeah, you're, Sorry, you're, you're, you're right. saved. You're saved. Yep. I mean, yes, that, that's true. So, I mean, okay. in ring, they've had two matches. They're totally fine. It just I seems just, like so boring. Though. I don't care a ton. Bully Ray and Diener versus Demore and a partner to be announced. With Darren McCarty as the enforcer. Probably Eric Young. Do not care about that at all. They, they're oh, going to yeah. revive him from the speculation? dead. speculation? I heard someone mention but that. He, I thought that's Yeah, he got yeah. murdered. We watched him get and murdered. And that's how he was going back to WWE and then nothing ever happened. Right. So, I watched I the man get murdered on television. How by Dean or though, so... I guess. Uh, Ultimate X match, which sounds pretty cool. So the winner gets an X Division shot whenever they want. So Bailey, Kushida, Kevin Knight, who all circle back around to later as well alan angels and jonathan gresham so that note it is alan angels that not could, just angels correct and that comes up in my discussion of impact as well um so that's a pretty awesome group yeah but so these matches though sometimes underwhelm i and my recent memory is i haven't loved all the ultimate even the one we saw in person we were that like, one was underwhelming and it felt like it just kind of ended right and the ultimate x felt really low like, I felt like teenage me being a six foot one person could have jumped up and grabbed that thing. Not, not my age right now, but back then. So it just was yeah. kind of underwhelming. Um, anyways, that should be a fun match, hopefully. Knockouts World Tag Team. Do you know? Actually, I should quiz you. Coven, and then it's the dog collar people. <laughs> Correct. Coven are defending against Masha and Killer it Kelly. It should be the dog collar clan. I, I feel like Jesus. Slamovich and Kelly win that, but I don't know. We'll see. Fatal four way. For I don't the... know. They're witches. So. Okay, this is my next question for you then. Fatal four way for the world tag titles. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So it's ABC Subculture. Correct. Moose and Myers and Callahan and Swan. Correct. That like two of those teams make no sense. I, I agree. There's a lot of talent in there. Um. Not that we've seen like a ton what of subculture. The, the rascals want a title shot. That makes more sense to me than right. But even they've got they, they did it. nothing. Well, yeah, but they're a team. Uh, Leo Rush, uh, Chris Sabin for the X Division Championship could be good. I'm a big fan of Leo Rush. And Saban's really good still, too, honestly. A Knockouts world title, as you know, Trinity is challenging Deanna Perrazzo. How do you feel about Trinity and Ring, before I say? I you know I love Perrazzo. I thought she was fine. Fine. I thought she was, like, solid for WWE, but I kind of got... I liked her less as time wore on. Like, I liked her more when I was younger and she was champion in 2017. She's very sports entertainer-y, right? Yeah. Which... 
I always remember the, the rapid kicks thing she did. Yes. Uh, was... Never looked too. No. Never oh. too. And hot. I think Peraza was awesome in the ring. But Look, I... we love a good rear view. <laughs> but don't you, don't you think Trinity has to win here, though? Kind of? No. I know, but I don't really want her to. But I think she's fine and she's entertaining and crowd likes her and she can be a baby face. So all those she's things are good for them. Valuable. She's good enough to be passable there yes. and bring some name value. Right. Exactly what she's it. doing. And then the world title, which is, I did write Nick Aldis here, even though, because I copied and Shelly and, and Magnus. It. Magnus will appear in my notes later, because I just, <laughs> I told you, I watched more Magnus than Nick Aldis. Yeah. I was watching Impact regularly when he was there as Magnus, and I was not watching much of anything else when he was <laughs> Aldis. And it just, he's Magnus to me. Uh, against Alex Shelley, where, I don't know where this is going to. How this is promo this week, and I'll talk about it later because I actually really liked it, but he used the phrase transitional champion in it. Like, that's well, that's pretty exposing the business, brother. Yeah, I mean, you, it, I, th- I think that is kind of exposing the business, but you can also look at, like, he's going to make him a transitional champion, I, I think guess. there's better ways to s- express There is better that, ways to say it, right? yeah, but, like... Like, you're going to be a short term or that's whatever. A, a small... more passable use of a real term than some other things right. that we've seen, I guess. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, that card. So, I don't know. The Did card... you get Leo Rush and Sabin? Yeah. Okay. The card looks fine, right? But it's a lot of matches. And then there's two on the... It's Hendry taking on Kenny King, I think. Yeah, and then and it's the... A it's, tag no, one. sorry. Death Dolls and Joey Threat versus... Right. But, or Shaw's people. Vidal. Uh, the, what are they called? There's some sort of punny name for it. The influence. Uh, Sean Shaw Shaw something. Anyways, Shaw you, Shank Redemption. you do a story and I'll look it up. Um so uh AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery are deep into contract extension extension discussions. Uh WBD has proposed AEW expanding the pay per view schedule to more now than like the five a year we get, or six including all in this year. Okay. Uh possibly even going one a month. Which I don't too much. No. I like AEW's current set up right now we get like right. one per like quarter of the year if you want to go there and then forbidden door is kind of like our top up yeah kind of thing because it's with new japan right and i think that things works, feel special that makes them feel special I mean, yeah. yes then it sucks when one doesn't deliver but then it's like there, I don't know, there's more pressure to deliver on those and they just they feel more meaningful and bigger and then you're also not paying whatever every month because it's not like we have the network and like you're paying ten dollars and the PLEs are just flowing in, you know what I mean? Yes, that is also true financially. Because WWE lot. did that for years, and they had like a they had like twelve pay per views or whatever. Yes, even more than like one a month, and you're paying for all of them, right? Right. Um. So AW like I think they have like they're a perfect spot now, and the TV specials are perfect like supplements to that. I agree. So I don't. If you want to add really one that. or two, I guess, but not every month. I can't do that. No, I could. I could do one more because, like, let's say with All In, like, we keep six in 2024. Maybe it's not All In, but let's say we keep six. Yeah. I could do six because that would be one every two months. Yep. Like, that that could work. I agree. Um, Seven's starting to push it. Yeah, I, I think so. So too. I think, like, six is good enough. But as long as they're making money, they're going to do it. And I understand. I, I get it, but I just don't think it. I think from a certain standpoint, it's not wise. You just get fatigue, right? There's too much. Yeah, and I don't really want to get fatigued. And they're sometimes, not all the time, really good at long-term storytelling. And that sort of goes a bit by the wayside when there's constantly a pay-per-view coming up. Yeah. I find it leads people to write really quick stories, which I don't generally Which enjoy. might be part of WWE's problem. Correct. Right? Everything is just like... And then they kind of get into copy and paste a bit too, because everything's very similar because they don't right. have a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, and I think like AW does a good job, good enough job of um making their TV feel meaningful because like what the second world title change they ever had, which was Kenny Omega winning it, was on a TV special. They've had like the tag titles change on TV specials, like pretty much any title has changed on a TV episode, whether it was a special one or not. Like, yeah, I think. Every title except maybe the TBS title, obviously, but like pretty much any of the titles has changed hands on TV. So I think like they do a good job, good enough job of making those like something you want to see when there's a title match. I feel like I remember you saying like a long time ago, like sometimes the case would be on NXT, especially before they had the TV deal and they went two hours, like especially on one hour NXT. Mm -hmm. Other than like 
Tommaso Ciampa winning the title when he beat Alistair Black. Yeah. There was rarely, like, major title changes right. on TV. Not at all. They would always save it for TakeOver. Yep. So, I think AEW does a good job of, like, not doing that. And yeah. And so, it's like, people would watch TV when there's title matches. So, like, um, the tag title match tonight with mm-hmm. uh, Bull Coco Gold, like, I would want to watch that because... Me too. That could be a switch or something, right? So, I don't know. I don't think we need too many more pay-per-views because I think their setups works really well. Yes, we are big fans um, of it. Selfishly, we don't really want it to change. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got to review a whole lot more. Right. Stuff. Yeah. Which, whatever. I enjoy doing that. Yeah. I like coming down here and talking. Um, I thought this was a fun one, too. AEW issues a- an updated list of banned things and things that require approval to do. So you can't mm-hmm. just do it on your own. Did you hear all these? I heard some of them, yeah. And I don't think it's like dumb, like... No, I don't think. But it's... some of them have clearly just happened, which I think made them revisit their list and yeah. tweak it. Um, Dan- uh, Danielson specifically. <laughs> um, so wrestlers will be fined if they don't follow these protocols, right? So if you don't get approval, or if you use one that's altogether banned, unprotected shots to the head makes sense. That's fair. Shots to the back of the head. Now, when they say shots, do they mean shots with foreign objects or like a forearm? Because a well placed forearm to the back i am assuming that kind of goes me. with the weapon thing i hope so because you can't really protect against those yes so I, I think that's fair i do i get this one too buckle bombs blind moves towards uh, uh sorry backwards into turnbuckles it'll end like dvds into them and suplexes into them but i'm those look awesome but it is because they're dangerous right that they look awesome i feel like then the elite can't do their one maybe not in or that's... maybe that's a permission one and like, yeah. hey, you've done it for 15 years and you've never heard anyone go ahead. Yeah, that, that right? could be fair, yeah. That kind of sucks because those moves are really cool. Seizure cells, which is the one Danielson was doing that made me a bit nervous. Yeah, um, especially with him. Again, adds to the story for sure, but... I don't need that. No. You can definitely sell without that. So that one I totally understand. Spitting. Gone. That makes sense. But uh, what's funny, as I look down here... It doesn't say anything about, like, licking other people's blood off of you, as Will Ospreay did, and some <laughs> others have. But anyways. Moxley. Blood in the crowd. Uh, no bleeding well in the crowd. No throwing bloody gear, tape, or other objects in the crowd. Makes sense. Weapons, projectiles in the crowd. Makes sense. Taking food or drinks from guests in the crowd. Physical contact with the crowd, for M- example. MJF. Remember when he did that to the kids? Yes. For example, holding an opponent and allowing a fan to chop them. So, yeah, I think... I feel like the, some of the backlash to the Caesar Caesar cell, that's tough to say for some reason, yeah. by Danielson is had them like revisit this sort of memo. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just interesting to see what's officially banned and not approved. Mm-hmm. Your turn. Uh, I don't have anything else. The only other thing. Oh, wait, I... actually, I do have one more. Sorry, go ahead then. Perfect. I forgot. I um, do you see who Rollins is going to face at SummerSlam? Isn't it Balor? Yeah. Yeah, a run it's it back. Balor again. Isn't the majority of the card. Uh, and again, no, I don't think so. When you when you get into pay per views all the time, this is also something that happens, right? Well, and I did you don't see have time the, to build, so you like. I did see back. the rumored card. Um, okay, yeah, here it is. So I think there's no. I don't think there's too many rematches because I think the only one I can find besides Rollins and Balor would be Cody and Lesnar from. Uh, it's not from, Gunther Riddle again. No. From, it, Cody Lesnar would be what? That would be Backlash and Saudi. They've had a couple, yeah. It was Backlash and Saudi. Uh, so the rumored card is, I guess I'll go through that. I would be So this is obviously just rumors, so not, nothing confirmed yet. So this is the rumors part of that, nice. I guess. Nailed it. Um, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso for Roman's belt. Makes sense. That uh, makes sense. Uh, that'd be cool. And people are talking about maybe Jey winning. Yeah, right. I'd be okay with that. I could see it. Not perhaps. picking him. Tell you um, right now. I don't think I'd pick him. I would. I could be swayed, but I don't think so. I... I I like it better than Cody at this point because they screwed that. Yeah, they like, that seems to be backburnered. Well, but anyways, we'll see if that happens. Uh, Rollins Balor obviously, uh, women's title Oscar Flair uh, Belair. Okay, that makes sense. I saw what culture was predicting like who was gonna have the titles at the end of the year. What's Trish doing? Isn't she rematching um, someone? Becky. I don't think they've had a pay per view match yet though. But like, they haven't had they've matches had recently. I don't think so. Oh okay. Um. So yeah, Felt Trish like versus Becky. Um. I saw them predict Charlotte will have the new title by. Charlie will have the new title by the end of the year. I would assume so. I would also assume so. Yeah. And also, I'll, an interesting one to mention was Brawling Brutes with the NXT tag titles. Nice. No. Pete Dunn, baby. Pete, yes. Pete Dunn. I was promised 
Pete Dunne. You were not this promised. Year. You were led to believe, though. I was promised Pete Dunne this year. In your own mind, <laughs> through your filter, you were promised. I was promised Pete Dunne. Feel Dunn logic. This year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Ripley versus Rodriguez for the women's world title. Yeah, that that could be good. It's just it doesn't feel right knowing how Raquel's been built on the it main roster. It could be good, but that should be bigger. It should be. It should feel bigger than. It this. felt bigger in, in NXT yes. when they feuded. Yeah, because Raquel is just lame right now. Yeah, um, so and I she went, doesn't have to be. I, exactly, I already went over Cody Brock and Becky Trish. Uh, Baszler Rousey, or why is it on here? It says Baszler Rhea Ripley, but I know it means Baszler Rousey. Yeah. Um, so f- fingers crossed for Baszler there. I would think. I would think so too. Unless but... they're gonna prolong it. I hope not. And go one and one, and then the she wins the final one or something. I, just, I don't know when I just want Rousey done. gone and Baszler on top. Well, that is what's uh, happening. Ricochet Logan Paul. Right. And Gunther versus McIntyre. Oh, yeah, that should be good. Yeah. Okay, so there's um, a few so matches that, on there. That should be good. Um, hopefully that does fan, because I think the majority of that is good. And um, We'll watch it. Obviously, like, probably a U.S. title or tag title match could be added. And also, this is more matches than they usually have for the recent PLEs. So I guess because it's also summer. It's a big one. Even still. Right. So we've been sort of making fun of tournaments not being very big. Did you? Oh, hear... is it the ROH one? Yeah. Did you hear about that? <laughs> the ROH. I did. So I saw the headline, right? Tournament to decide Samoa Joe's ring. Of I Honor. also saw that. Death yeah. before dishonor challenge. I saw a post about that. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I swipe to the other slide, and I'm like, oh. And then I, yeah. Then I see a an image of the bracket for it, and how many people were in the tournament? I'll four. Think four people. So... And one of them is Sean Dean. <laughs> right. So Dalton Castle and Shane Taylor are going to meet in the finals of this prestigious four-person tournament. Because um, wasn't it last week we were joking about having two-person tournaments? Like we got as yeah, close to that as and possible. Stuff like basically. that. And like, sorry, the, 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 the like, good for Sean Dean finally getting a push. He made it to the semifinals, right, <laughs> of a prestigious tournament for a major championship. <laughs> so you had Castle defeated Nice in the first first round slash semifinals, I guess, and. Shane Taylor, who I quite enjoy, defeated Sean Dean. So in the other semifinal, I'm hoping it's Taylor because watching a Samoa Joe Shane Taylor match would be yeah. That's what I saw someone saying. Physical. Although if they're both heels, I don't see. It. I could see. It. I feel like it's Castle probably, um, which, which could also be good. It could because he's a good wrestler. But um, I just I really like Shane Taylor. All right, uh, you're out of news. I'm out of news. That's I, how it goes. So let's uh, move into an in-depth review of this past Wednesday's episode of AEW Dynamite. So now it's the Aussie Open theme I'm hearing as I do my little bits of production in between segments. I can't find it on iTunes and it's annoying. So we'll have to do our importing of it then. Yeah. If you want, we can. But anyways, talk about uh, some Dynamite that, that I thought had some entertaining stuff this week. Was your entertainment sports entertainment, perhaps? And yes, I mean Chris Jericho. It was not a lot of him, no. Chris Jericho and Commander. Correct. <clears throat> and then my first two notes. Me. <laughs> where did this match come from? Jack. Internet. <laughs> it's <laughs> so. literally the most internet. No, because it's like, it's really the ones they just announce on Instagram as like oh, a right. match. Like not even. Dark or Elevation. Rampage. Well, there's no dark. I actually. know. But like, actually, there is dark. You know what it's called? R O H, baby, burn. That's not nice. It base it 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 is. I saw the one the one time, and I, some guy was talking about the downfall of Tony Khan's R O H. Yeah. And um, I think it's called Top Ten Wrestling. Um, and so he's talking about it. And like the one week they had nineteen matches yeah, on dark. I know that that or I just called dark on yeah. R O H. That's dark. They did. That is dark. Okay, and you yep. cannot convince me otherwise. It's just dark with like slightly better matches sometimes, and like I saw him saying like R O H was doing better when it was just appearing on AEW when like it was Claudio and Jericho having like the like the feud for the title on like when Jericho would win it on you know AEW or yeah. like when the title when he was defending the title on AEW. Mm-hmm. Or when Joe had the title in AEW, and I think that's kind of true. I mean, yes, did the ROH titles take away from AEW a little bit, but it was ROH was doing better before the Honor Club. It was definitely thing, higher right? profile, right? And now it's just like kind of like that. Anywho, a little little off topic. And my, because I'm kind of getting done with Jericho again. We yeah. seem to go in cycles. Mm-hmm. And I say so. My one note here is not sure why we need to pair Co- Commander with a 52 year old in the opener. He's it's weird. Jericho's like because he's in like good shape still he's in he really good shape i forget how old he is i know he's old and i i bring that up as one of my complaints about him 
ruining Takeshita's hopes and dreams. Right. Um, or <laughs> perhaps my hopes and dreams. Along with Takeshita, yes. Yeah. Um, that he is old, but I honestly forget how old he is. Cause I, like, for my mind always goes to, like, late 40s or whatever. I forget that he's, like, bordering on a legal senior citizen now. It's funny. We seem to be in this cycle with Jericho where, like, he does a bunch of stuff that kind of annoys us, but then he like does a strings a couple cool things together, and we're like, oh yeah, that's kind of entertaining. And then it's <laughs> and like that's that's his genius to play to keep him keep himself around. Is like he'll like do whatever he wants, and when people don't like, it, he'll like do he'll start doing good. some good things, and people are like, oh yeah, he can stay around Jericho. Then when Jericho's got enough like yeah. goodwill, when we're back on the the train, he'll uh, he'll he'll start like jassing it up again. Yeah, and then it's just gonna be like the endless it's cycle until he's too old to retire. It's a complicated relationship we have with that guy right now yeah um i think joining the don Callis family would push me over the edge it though. would for sure i'm that's the point of no return for you yeah he's on very thin ice right he now he is he is very very thin ice um anywho the match with commander mm-hmm. uh is at hand it uh is. there's a slingshot headsers takedown from commander followed by running shock on dropkick which that's since Jericho blind into the corner. That should be illegal. True. Okay, he cannot drop kick him. Maybe in the he corner. got approval. <laughs> he got yeah for a, this is a running drop kick in there. Yeah. Every week, Tony Khan's getting like fifty emails from guys going, "Our match w- wishes to include this, this, this," and he's some, someone's gonna be, like, "Yep, you're fine. No, you're not." Right? Like that's yeah interesting. Uh, there's an Escalera and a Dragon Run from Commander. Uh, turning into the outside from Commander. And then he sends Jericho into the steel stairs. Uh, Jericho hip tosses the commander over the ropes and out to the floor. He kind of hit off the apron, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, there's a pair of power bombs from Jericho. Rope walk shooting star from commander for two. Um, commander is the rope walk. Uh, Spaceman punch on the outside. The Fosbury he pop did. looking thing. Yep. Uh, and then eventually Jericho submits commander with the lion tamer. Um, then Don Callis comes out. So I'm going to try to summarize because I don't care. Um... Callus was buzzing about the segment last week. Uh, you mentioned they have history going back. I think it was some years. of the ratings or something. Um, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Demo God. Yeah. Uh, they he talked about their stable with Bad News Allen, Bad News Brown. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got trained by him or whatever. That he was showed, cool to he see. He showed a little video. Yeah, that was kind of cool. And I thought it was really funny how like Jericho looks young, like Lionheart Jericho. Callus, like his face, he just still looks old. Yeah. He just looks less like. He's just gone with faces where, like, he's an adult. He just looks old That's, already. um, famously Arn Anderson. Like, he looked 55 when he was probably 30. So then yeah. he ended up, quote-unquote, aging well because he just looks the same, yeah. right? Yeah, Don Callis looks basically the same, except now he's got a scar and no hair. Right, it's which Jericho just, points out in this. It's basically just he lost I hair. I seem yeah. to have all my hair in that. Yeah. Uh, Jericho, yeah, made a bald comment. Um, Callis said, bad news, Allen's in heaven or whatever. He's smiling at the possibility of them joining up again. Blah, blah, blah. Jericho's pondering it. He doesn't give him give an answer. Yeah, non-committal still. And I'm still very, very afraid. Yeah. Um, Match-wise, I think I liked it, but a lot of Commander's offense, maybe in general, but I noticed it more with Jericho, has Jericho like standing and waiting for stuff to happen, which is never... Because Commander's going to do something cool and complicated, right? But it requires Jericho to stand there and wait for it, basically. And I don't know. I just noticed it several times in this. Not everything was clean. Did you mention the big um, Phoenix Splash botch? That oh, he had? no, I didn't. Yeah, there was that in the middle of there, too, right? So I still found myself enjoying the match, though. Um, and I guess it's like a rehab win for Jericho because commentary pointed out that he's been in a rut lately, right? So Jericho needed a win. I don't think Commander does. The result of this makes sense. I liked that Commander's kind of re- reliance on the high-risk offense is what cost him the match in the mm-hmm. finish, right? Because he got caught and submitted yeah. or whatever. Uh, a fine match. I don't think it's a hot opener, but I, I enjoyed it. And then the aftermath, like, I always like nostalgia and real stuff being worked into stories. Um, no. And I like that Callus is slimy enough to use, like, the wishes of a... the supposed wishes of a dead guy, right? As, like, motivation sort of thing. But, yeah, like you, I don't have interest in i'm not quite as fervent about it as you but i don't you want should Jer- be protecting to cash okay? i do not want jericho in the faction but the match was was good i guess yeah um it was fine it's it's a jericho match with no story so i wasn't super invested or expecting that's much. fair too because like jericho can still he's still capable of a solid match but i think there needs to be a story and like at like commander's good but i don't think he's drawing anything out of jericho kind of good mm-hmm 
Um, Kaminer looked solid. He got his usual cool offense, but there was nothing that great out of the ordinary here. It was made worse by a couple botches or a little sloppiness here. I feel like Jericho could have a could have had a squash match in the middle of the show against someone lower and achieved the exact same result with the post match. I don't think we needed to give Commander a loss here. I don't think we needed to like have this match and we could have had a hot opener instead and then Jericho just have like a squash later. Yeah, I'd be you fine know what with I mean? that. I think that would achieve the exact same effect. This isn't something that needed to start the show. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, Kaos is always great. I just don't want the payoff they're teasing at all <laughs> and I hate the possibility of it. And Kaos keeps talking about how great even the possibility of them teaming is and Wrong. how that would make bad news unhappy. Meanwhile, I'm having the exact opposite reaction. Hopefully this doesn't happen. Last week's opener was far better. This is just okay. It was. I what was last week's, week's opener? Swerve the tag glory. team. Yeah. That is correct. Good match. Need them back together. Uh, instead of Dustin Rhodes. Uh, next we get a Jack Perry interview. Um, Marvez. Um, Shavani called him Al Scoops. Or I was so confused for a second until he clarified. <laughs> um, Marvez interviews uh, him with Jack Singh in the back of the car. And he said, uh, it's an unsafe work environment. And he's here to do his job and wrestle in the ring. Not in the parking lot. Hook gets in the backseat from the other side. Tries to get at him again. But Jungle Boy runs out. Uh, Hook tries pulling his hair to keep him in reach, but Jack elbows him pretty decently. Yep. And then runs off once again. Hook gets out of the car, and then the car drives off, and he says to the camera, keep running, Perry. Yep. He actually spoke again. Mm. So clearly Perry is, Jungle Boy is a cowardly heel, yeah. which I think is the best route to go with him. I think it's kind of working so far. I think, like, I can understand not liking the first promo, but I think I, I'm, I'm enjoying these little bits somewhat because... I like that, like, the way he's kind of phrasing things is trying to come off as a professional or someone he's just trying to do his job yeah. who wants to wrestle and settle it in the ring, but he's using it to be a coward, right? right? Which is simple, but I like it. I think it, I think it works. Yeah, well. it's growing on me. Like, when they keep it, I just don't think he's ready for, like, live especially lengthy yeah, promos. Yeah, no, that's right. It's never right? been his real strength. Keep it short and sweet. Yeah, which, and I, I think, well, which is why I'm liking these. And if they need to, they can go to, like, I'm a Hollywood kid and I am I was born wealthy and my dad was super famous. Like, there's all kinds of routes they can go if they mm -hmm. want to make him sort of a douchebag, you know what I mean, if they can. So, yeah, I kind of, uh, I think the cowardly heel is the right move for him. Mm -hmm. And um, he better ask Tony Khan for that title match soon. Right. Well, it's uh, it's going to be for the FTW, right? That's yeah, he the, sees it. He's got to ask Tony, though. That's the only gold he's getting. Yeah. Uh, next, we got Don Callis interview. Um, he says, Jericho's a fabulous athlete. I don't think that could describe Jericho past in the tense. past. Past tense, yes. I don't think that could describe him in the past, like, four years or something. Could be. Um, uh, he says he'll announce Blackpool's uh, fifth member for their team by himself later tonight. Renee asks if that's dangerous going alone, and Cal says if there's anyone he's not afraid of, it's that gutless coward King Omega, and he'll probably hide behind the skirts of the Young Bucks. So obviously, the, he went out of his way to say announcing it alone, right, for no good reason. So yeah, you'd figure that would good. come back around. And the payoff is nice. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Um, next, we get more MJF and Adam Cole bonding. Uh, MJF says Cole isn't being much of a team player, and he's not wearing the shirt. Cole claims he lost it. Um, Girls walk by and say hi. Uh, MJF says it could be two for him and two for Cole. <laughs> and Cole says he cares about Britt. Um, and MJF says four more for Daddy, and he leaves with them for he's briefly. Like, or he's like, I could make the cameras go away if that's what you need to have <laughs> happen here, right? Like, yeah. if you're just saying that because you know the cameras yeah, yeah. are here. Yeah. Um, MJF comes back later and says the maximum ride is spent, yeah. which I found really funny. Um, Cole then confesses he didn't lose the shirt, and he'll wear it right now if they do what he wants to do next. And Cole whispers it to him. And just kind of like adverse to it, and then they we cut to them sitting in a hotel room about to play the fight forever, right? Smart, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Clever little plug for the game too. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, I really like Woven that. in there. Um, M just says there's no way he's playing video games like a nerd. Um, and they're playing a tag match together as themselves against yeah, FTR. Uh, M Jeff kind of likes this. Is actually fun to play with a friend. Cole asks if he's never played multiplayer before, and M Jeff kind of goes like, uh, says you need friends for that. Kind of like playing the sympathy card. Um, Cole says in all honesty when they got paired up he had the intention of blindsiding him and cutting him out and then MJF's like he was thinking the same thing which I thought that was kind of funny uh, and then Cole uh, said he's actually pretty cool and MJF says the same and they sa he says how about they to win the tag tiles and then they say their tag catchphrase the better than you baby yeah um, just fun man these two have really really good chemistry and these are just super entertaining segments I don't know how the rest of the world feels about them but I 
and it's actually telling a story, right? So yes, they planned on screwing the other over, but they've spent time together. They start to understand and maybe like each other. And we could still end up with someone screwing over somebody, obviously, right? Because it's about who's being sincere and who isn't and what percentage of sincerity is there there. So, And they're both just really good performers and actors, so it actually works. Because mm -hmm. I don't think this is an easy angle to pull off. No, I find it super entertaining, though. And they just have really believable chemistry. And it's tough because I know some people are going to be like, this isn't a good look for your heel main champion and stuff, but I don't think it matters. I disagree because I think this will add some something memorable to his title run. Like when I remember his title run, when it's all said and done, I'm going to remember it like that was, you remember the super entertaining bit with Adam Cole? That was during his title right. run. That was something, it, besides the matches, like the one he had with Danielson and the Four Pillars match, yeah. this is something like memorable you can add to his title run, right? Like yep. this will m make it like, not completely forgettable. This like, is one of obviously, those, I don't think it will be, but this, this will be something one of those things to add where to he, it. This is like, he's the complete package. If he needs to be like the furious, vicious, whatever, he'll fine. If he needs to be like yeah. kind of having fun and being vulnerable, whatever, he can do that too. And I right? don't think it makes him look like a complete idiot e either because... No, I don't. It's him trying to con Cole. It's and I all think part of some scheme. Always. Whether they are genuinely connecting or not, or like MJF's like faking, he's like faking it to a degree, right? He's yes. trying to get out of another title challenger. Yes. So he, do he doesn't look like a complete idiot here because we know he's been, he's been known to like play up. He like pretended to be loyal in the inner circle or right. he pretended to be a baby face in the build to the mocks feud. This has the same kind of vibes, right? So it's not like... This is completely foreign to him. It doesn't make him seem like a complete idiot. No, because he always has some end game in. Yeah, mind. and eventually his true colors will show yes. once again, right? So I, I am thoroughly mm -hmm. entertained. Yeah, by I like this. this very much. Um, I thought it started a little slower than the last one with the bar stuff, but it also may have been longer. I thought the bar portion was pretty solid. I thought the maximum ride line was funny. I thought it was a lot funnier when they were playing the video game, um, partially because I think literally the first promo MJF ever cut in. AEW was in the casino bar when he was doing the video games chant and mm -hmm. he was making fun of it. Mm -hmm. So this goes back yes. as far as you can go, pretty much. Um, his very well known distaste for video games and partially because I think it's like a well done little ad for the game. It is. So I, th I think that's kind of cool. Um, that's pretty funny. And I also like how it's like developing where they might actually like each other. Yeah. At least Cole does, right? Because MJF, there's always the possibility where he's just baking it to get get his end game like you said right like if cole's starting to like him he's gonna play it up more yes. right so i could see it i could see them being being uh friends full on or then like when they don't win the tag tiles i'm just gonna turn on him again uh like uh he did in the mock feud and his true colors will show right. or um like I don't, there's is a universe where they stay together, but I feel like MJF turns them anyways. But I could see MJF not turning just to keep him out of his hair. I don't, mm -hmm. I could, I feel like he'll turn because that just seems like the logical conclusion. You would assume, um, but and then like it'll be interesting because I feel like because of MJF's like bonding efforts, uh, Cole would actually feel betrayed, and we could get a full on title feud between them like throughout the summer, which yeah. I think once we go full blown feud with this, like that would be really good because they had the really good eliminator match, but they that did. was just like kind of off of a one week thing, right? Speaking of which. Did you hear, you know how we've complained about the name Eliminator? Tony Khan finally explained it somewhere and it actually makes sense. Did I you hear this? I thought they did that a while ago. Well, I just heard it like today or the, yesterday. Okay, and we might have heard it before. I don't know. Me... Do you know what it is? That, so if you lose, you are then eliminated from title contention. Meaning like if you're the champion and I lose the Eliminator match against you, I can't challenge for your title as long as you're, cha I've been eliminated from a contender for you. Okay. That makes sense. Right? And I've been mocking it forever, and it actually, it just, I don't I feel always, like they explained like, it. I thought back when it was rankings, it was like, you're out of the, because I thought, like, I feel like they did Similar, it in the rankings. Yeah, I guess that idea, makes sense. Yeah. You're completely removed. As a, it's like the Cody thing, except only when they're champion. Yeah. Because that's the thing. So basically, like. Or, and only that title reign, probably. Right. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah, obviously only when it's that champion. Because, and that's interesting, because that's a stipulation that's been done before, right? In, like, yeah. wrestling. So, like. I guess then, like, if you do a title match, like, let's say you're the champion or whatever, and then you're defending against whoever, and if you retain the title, then they can't... It's like an eliminator yes. before the title. So they, it actually makes sense, but, like, I don't feel like they ever explained it. Commentary, anybody, no. ever. And so I thought it sounded dumb, because I no. couldn't... I don't think they ever did. But yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh Carry my on. god, I just remember the Matt Seidel one. Right. That one was really good. It was really good. That was like the only memorable thing Matt Seidel's ever done. Pretty much. Well, it's... in AEW. 
I'm sure. Name one other thing Matt Seidel has done. He other talked than to being us, Wrestling Society he X. He at a live event. Oh, and he, he, he was claimed nice. to have more than two eyes, which I don't think he does. He was quite nice back then. Yeah. Maybe still is. I don't and know. Evan Bourne doesn't count. I'm talking about Matt Seidel. Okay. And Wrestling Society X could be one of them. Because that was... That was a good normal. time. Go yeah. look that up if you're new to listening yeah. to us. I made Jack watch a couple... One episode? I two. Was, I think it was two. Cause two episodes of uh, Wrestling Society X. That's one of our rare bonus episodes. We went to... I don't remember the last bonus we did. Wrestling on Speed. Oh, yeah. Anyways, carry on. Um, so I guess like, um, so next we're going to the blind eliminator again. Mm-hmm. Does that mean like the winning team will never challenge for the titles again? Because <gasps> there's so many tag teams in this tournament. There's so many. <laughs> um, next, so it's Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy versus Jazz's, uh, Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara in the semis of the blind eliminator tag tournament. Yes. Semis. Semis. That's it. Four team tournament. It's about now. I mean, at this stage, it's about as big as the ROH. It's one. the same size. Yeah. Um, Guevara and Cassie stand off, then Garcia blind blindsides Cassie with a shot to the back of the head, and uh, does his little dance. Um, then Guevara and Darby were shaking hands. I thought he teased hands. the dance and then didn't do it. No, he did it. He did it. He did. Oh. Uh, Guevara and Darby shake hands, which is interesting. And then they begin to have a bit of back and forth. But when Darby runs the ropes, Garcia gets a cheap shot. Guevara not thrilled with that. Uh, Garcia counters a suicide out from Cassie, shoves him in the barricade, then hops up to the apron, slaps Guevara on the chest for a tag, and then goes after Darby. Um, Darby hits the code red on Guevara, but Garcia made the blind tag, sneaks behind him with a crucifix pin for two. Uh, Cassie gets a hot tag. Garcia later locks him in the dragon tamer, but he lets go to take out Darby. Uh, Garcia, gets a st- or Garcia takes a stun dog millionaire from Cassie, then pop over Sunder from, Dar- from Darby, and then a tilt a world DDT from Cassie for two. Uh, beach break to Guevara, then Garcia rolls uh, Cassie up with a crucifix or two, then they go back and forth to pin attempts to no avail. Sammy connects with a pretty decent flying knee to Darby, remember that? Yes, it looked good. Um, then he misses a shooting star, though. Um, Garcia's Cassie in the dragon team on the outside, and Prince Nana comes down with the skateboard. I think he was like... Nana. Was he trying to... He was trying to hand it to someone. I think it was either Garcia or Cassidy, or something like that. And then yes. while the ref is distracted by that... Darby's kind of leaning out of the ring, trying to grab it away or whatever, and then Swerve just jumps off the apron and House calls him. You were so happy. <laughs> so it's so good. It's honestly like kick finishers are really good sometimes. Yeah. Like, what Clay, I love a good Claymore. Um, Black Mass, obviously. The one he hit on uh, Wayne call. later oh, yeah. on this we'll, was. We'll get to that. Wayne absolutely died on that. Like House Call is honestly like, it's for how simple it is. It's it's way too good. It always looks and sounds great. Oh yeah, and like it's one of those times where like. The thigh slap, it's like, it's probably makes no sense in the real world, like, logically. Like, it does make sense logically, but, like, it doesn't make sense in the in the sense that, like, that would never be the real sound of Right, but kick, still helps. But it's, it helps so much, because when he hits a good house call and you hear that snap on the, like, it's so good. Like, I don't... It is. I, I always get a kick out of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See what you did there. Thanks. Uh, then the finish comes with Guevara, connects with the GTH to Darby uh, for the win. And then after he shakes Darby's hand again. Yeah. Interesting. I thought um, that Garcia and Guevara did a good job of like teasing dissension, right? You had blind tags. Mm-hmm. At one point, Sammy wasn't there when Garcia needed a tag. Garcia hit him at one point, knocked him off the apron, right? I and thought then, Guevara was the most interesting part of this. And then post-match, Sammy seemed unhappy with the cheap win, right? And then getting looking for the handshake. So I thought Garcia looked good here. He seemed meaner and less... Um, entertainery in this one and more like a vicious wrestler which is what I want from him and I I noticed like mid-match that so much of this had one or both of the legal men with nobody in their corner so I was almost going to use it as a nitpick but I then I thought about it more and I think it's kind of cool because these are basically four singles wrestlers right so this match for the most part this match felt like not so much a tag match as just into indiv- little four individual wrestlers right um there wasn't a lot of tag continuity. There wasn't a lot of like tandem moves and stuff, uh, but I still really enjoyed the match. And then Swerve getting revenge and setting up a program with Darby Allen, if that's where they're going, is super cool by me. Yeah, or I thought it was because I guess it could be that. Yeah, I guess getting revenge for uh, last week. Well, and that would make sense because Allen is tied to Nick Wayne, right? And after the result of the main event, I thought it was, yeah, he was getting revenge for last week, and he's kind of playing mind games with Wayne. I think so. Um, I'm I, disappointed that they're going to drop Swerve in our glory already. And 
Garcia and Guevara not being on the same page but still winning, I like in this circumstance. Um, I thought this was a good tag match that accomplished a lot of things and like furthered a lot of stories. So I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought it was solid. Um, I like how he, Guevara was kind of like handshaking like and uh he was like irked every time garcia was cheating yeah uh and uh tagging himself and so i thought that was kind of cool um it was a nice small way to continue guevara's journey to baby facing um and the because they kind of stalled it with all the, the sting nonsense right yeah um i like swerve coming in too as payback for darby norwich beating him and lee last week and then it could kind of like mess with nick wayne as well so i think that works and speaking of Nick Wayne, we get another brief uh, vignette. We do. And this time he's actually speaking words. He did, and I thought he did a decent job. Yeah. Um, he showed a ring in a big shed and says where he was taught and trained by his father. Uh, he was in the ring at six months old, and he started training at nine. Crazy. Uh, nine years, not nine months, just to clarify. Um, he tells a story about his mom, sat him on the ring apron, how she broke the news of his dad passing due to heart issues. Uh, he said he was left wondering what was next. And he had no father figure. And he said from then on, he was training for himself and for his father so he could perform. And when he gets asked if he's ready, he says yes. And he's been training his whole life for it. Yeah, I think this is like an incredible backstory for this kid, for them to put on TV. And I, he did a good job speaking. Like, um, Yeah, I thought he sounded like like not better than I expected. Not uncomfortable. Right. I, better, agree. Than, better than Jungle Boy. I thought this was another great vignette ahead of his debut. And at this point, I was just hoping that the match would deliver yeah. because I think I they thought did it a really, good job. I thought it built nicely off of our introduction. I think yeah. I really appreciate them hyping him up decently. And they've like established a baby face to root for, right? And he looks like literally a baby because he is so young. So there, this is a guy that, and I don't think he needs to win a ton even yet. We've talked about it, but. They've got a possibly hot baby face that they've built up into. And I think it's really seconds. smart on them, too, because especially with how good he he's said to be and how good he's like been or how good he was in the match here. Yeah. Um, I think it's really smart on, for them because they're basically getting in on the ground floor with him. Literally, right. as soon as he's able to. As soon to, as he can legally be on him. TV for them right. wrestling. And, and they in. even like they pre-ordered him, basically. Yes, right? That's right. Um, and I think that's really smart on them because then like. I feel like if he ends up making it big, then that looks really good on them for investing. Right. And then also, if he if he's ever like his contract's up in the air, like that's something other than their cap, like they made him right, and then they they vote they've been in on him. So I think that's um good on them. I think that could work out really nicely. Um, I'm hoping the match delivers too, because obviously they don't want to like all this hype for nothing. Right. So he I'm kind of reminds me out. of um Shane Helms mm. a little bit early on Shane Helms. Is he going to do his And he had a long career and he was awesome in the ring. Mm -hmm. Like he was really good in the ring. Mm -hmm. Uh sorry, go ahead. Uh next we get Adam Cole in an interview. Um he was on the phone with Britt and Renee trying to get a word. Roddy comes in in a neck brace and asks if Cole's really starting to like MJF. Cole says he's not a half bad guy and he and Roddy didn't start off as friends either. Uh Cole gets text from MJF and says <laughs> that and it says I did my best to get it verbatim. Hey, bro, you ready to rock that tag merch and hit that double clothesline? <laughs> Actually, I just saw Brian Cage walk by me, and I think I have the flu. And then Cole walks out showing him Max that he doesn't have the flu. Yeah, uh, another just a lot shorter, but really fun stuff again. And then Roddy bringing in an element of seriousness, right? And you can't do this with MJF because he's talked about having no friends, so we can't see how anyone in his life feels about this relationship, but we can with Cole, right? Because mm -hmm. again... They're not just in a vacuum. They're still interacting yeah. with other people. So Cole needing to talk his cowardly partner into facing the monsters is funny, right? Um, and I again, I I know people are going to say this makes MJF look weak or something, but I don't think so. And I no, think and it's, especially it's the, worth with it. the faking sick thing because that's a nod to Cole being sick, right? Um, that's a nod to MJF getting out no of things showing before, things, yep. and that's also just in his character to want to get out of things yep. easily. So it, it really he's, it's perfectly fine. He's trying to avoid facing Cole. That's where this whole again. That's where yeah, this whole thing's coming. The from. whole the whole storyline is him avoiding facing. So someone, he's now so. like two layers of him <laughs> trying to avoid matches, yeah. singles and a tag. Plus, I don't think I'm looking to avoid the Roy. I would avoid the Roy boys too. Right. So that I, I enjoyed this again. Yeah. Um, yeah, MJF's texts are always cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving those. Hey, he's, bro. He, he, <laughs> I love the the double clothesline bit. I, I, would, I would like him to go keep going with bro Chacho. Well, and look at how they are building when that double clothesline happens. That's the stupidest thing ever. Because it went from just talking about it to teasing it, and then it's going to happen, and mm -hmm. the crowd's going to go bananas for the most <laughs> 80s like tag move ever. That's like um, when Psycho Mike 
pops him for a body slam, which MJF also did here. But like, I, <laughs> it's even dumber because it's a double that's, clothesline. That's working the fans. It's gonna work. Too. It's it's. Oh, I'm I'm excited for it. Right. I I I love it. I just think it's stupid at the same time, and I I do I love it though. Um. So next we get the other semi from the blind tournament. It's Big Bill and Brian Cage. Or they should their team name should be Big Cage. That is a pretty imposing team. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and that he's a machine, by the way. He is a machine. And that's why they call him Cage. I don't know if anyone knows that. Yep. Um, and they're taking on Adam Cole and MJF with their tag shirts. Um, and MJF did the entrance with them again, which is pretty funny. Um, so MJF started against Big Bill, and he starts a body slam chant, and then he goes for it, and he doesn't get it. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a was, recurring theme. That was in this. pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, MJF takes out to Cole. And walks up the ramp, but Cole talks him out of it. Uh, Cage does push-ups, then Cole does push-ups. Uh, MJF tags back in. He wants a big bill to tag in. And so MJF, sh- chant- he starts a body slam chant again. Uh, and he tries again. And he gets a little closer, but he, he fails again. <laughs> um, MJF goes for push-ups. But bill stomps him and then boots Cole off the apron. He's got a pretty good big boot, though. He does. Um, and back from commercial break, Bill rips off MJF's shirt and wipes his ass with it. He does. Um, MJF gets mad afterwards and bites Bill's hand when he went for a chokeslam and hits a body slam. It was also at this point, I noticed MJF's elbow pad says double clothesline, and that made me laugh you very love that. hard. Yeah. That was very funny. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I swear the other week or one of the other weeks, his elbow pad said something else, too. It you might have been level it. of the devil or something, but like <laughs> I thought that was a great use of his. Even little things like that are just that. Was, that was really funny. Um, so uh, he makes he pokes uh, Cage in the eye, makes the hot tag out to Cole, pump kicks from Cole, and then he tags him. Jeff, they shout double clothesline, but Bill takes him out with a double clothesline of his own, just solo. How can it. those both be double clotheslines? Because if one, I'm transcribing both, a match to a blind person, they're both two arms doing a clothesline. But I'm trying to help. I'm trying to paint a visual picture for somebody. They can't be the same thing. Well, then you'd be a lot more descriptive, wouldn't you? I guess. Shame, sir. And, Shame. And Big Bill takes them both out with a double clothesline. I'd have to do something like that. Or like he, he clotheslines them both at the same time. It'd work. Anyway, sorry. In stereo going. with his other arm. Two different things with one name. <laughs> Figured out wrestling. <laughs> um, stereo superkicks take a Bill and Cage clotheslines them both. <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> then cage carries them both and does a Samoan drop always slam because he's large he is large no joke on this match so i'm angry uh we got a heat seeker from mjf followed by last shot from cole to cage uh for the win and so they advance to the finals against the jazz boys yep oh god cole's back with jazz um mjf calls out for the devil worshippers in the house uh post-match promo uh he does he starts a chant for cole to do the thing we get now cole bay bay and then he says another thing that's cool is their t-shirt. He says they're so close to that double clothesline and says it's coming. And then we get a double clothesline chant. Just, that's just so stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cole says he never expected a team between the two of them to work. And he thinks uh, they're getting pretty damn good. He says he didn't have high expectations, but he does on winning the tournament. If they win, they get a title shot on collision because that's where the tag titles are now. Great. Um, he says he'll make a promise. And he says if they stay on the same page they've been on, you'll be looking at new tag champs. And they finished off with their joint catchphrase. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't, this was not a wrestling masterclass, but it was, again, really fun, right? Um, one detail we noticed at the beginning, we even went back to double check, is that, like, MJF in this, like, baby face leaning character, do you remember he gave his ring to the referee yeah. before the match? Yeah, so we were cool talking detail. about, like, yeah, because you were like, why is the ref taking that? And then so I went back to watch, and then I noticed, like, he was kind of, like, giving, to, like, he was offering it up, because yeah. I thought, I agree too, like, if, if he was just like, if the ref was just taking the ring, why hasn't that happened right. a million times over? Why didn't that happen with Tanahashi? He's used it a million times. Right. So I think that, like, that would have irked me, right? Because that would be a huge inconsistency. But no, but he gave it to him. Yeah, I think that's a nice touch yep, if he's babyface here. Yeah, so the dynamic of these two, Cole and MJF, is just captivating fans, right? And the response to this was pretty much what they wanted and I thought was excellent. So that story continues. I mean, it's not the best that you kind of had to sacrifice Big Bill and Cage in a not super serious match. Particularly but Cage. It'll quickly be forgotten, right? Um, so yeah, I thought this Zandy. was more entertainment. These guys mm-hmm. are all over this show, and I enjoyed all of it. Oh yeah, I, I enjoyed this very much, Lee. Um, I could see people not enjoying this for the comedy and the lack of wrestling, but I enjoyed this very much as someone who enjoys wrestling. So Same, and this is the comedy that I like. It's mm-hmm. not cartoonish, ridiculous stuff. 
Yeah. It's just fun. Um, I thought him Jeff's antics at the beginning were really funny, and the body slam bit was fun, and resulted in a nice little payoff in the match. Um, I also like that it came uh, when he kind of hulked up after losing the shirt. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of funny. I uh, also audibly laughed quite a bit at the elbow pad. That's a really small thing, but that was really funny. And that's just that's what makes him Jeff great, just the, the little things. It's really funny. Uh, the teaser double close was funny, too, but I assume that'll be saved for the finals next week, which will be nice. Um, post-match promo was solid too. It's cool to see them kind of on the same page. I'm interested to see how the rest of it will turn out. It's same. been thoroughly entertaining so far. It this, has. This kind of made the show fly by, right? This was like, I think a little after this was around the point. Where this has like, been like a memorable story arc that I will probably remember, which to, if you listen to this mm-hmm. show, I don't remember a ton of stuff. So I've seen, I'll like, remember I remember this. seeing like a thing on Walk Culture. I didn't read all of it, but it just, the title was like that WWE's hot this year and AEW's cold. And I think on one end, that's a fair statement. I think WWE is kind of hot this year. I think this is a really good year for them. Yeah, right. Bloodline, the Bloodline story Gunther, and Gunther is doing great. Deal. I think they're international. They're doing re- really well internationally because Owens and Zayn are great. Lo- right, Owens and Zayn. Like, look how many international shows they've had. Right, like you yes. know, like Puerto Rico, the UK. They went to Montreal for Elimination Chamber, etc. Yeah. Saudi doesn't count because no one cares. Um, <laughs> but like. They're doing great this year. So I think I think saying they're hot is perfectly fair, but I don't think AEW is cold this year. And that could just be like as more of an AEW fan myself. Not not AEW only. I'm not finding not, it cold. No. Is and it especially peak not AEW now. maybe not, but right? it's still enjoyable. I don't think it's that far from it though. I'm not saying it's peak, but like I think they're doing really good because I think on like this year I've loved the Blackpool Elite story. I I think it's awesome. Yes, I I really enjoyed that. That's like their arrival to the Bloodline thing. And maybe it's not as hot this year, but like in the grand scheme of things, Elite storylines are peak yep. wrestling for me. And so I think that's been really great. Um they had the rematch of the century. Need I mention it one more time? <laughs> Um, that was awesome, which I watched a few I was, days ago. I was there. Course. Did you know that? I, that really? Yeah. I was there, too. Were you? Yeah. I don't remember I, seeing I watched you the there. whole thing. It was pretty huh. good. Yeah. It was. I was, I was like, right in, like, you know how there's, like, all those chairs in the arena? I was in one of them. I'll still never, well, I'll still never, I'll never forget the fact that that guy missed that match because he got too oh, drunk. Oh, that's so wild. And left yeah. halfway through the show. I don't know. That, like, if I found that out and then, like, you watching the match back, I'd be so pissed. Right. I'd be so pissed. But, like, between that and then, I think the Cole M. Jeff is, like, a really, it's a surprising one. Because I feel like the Mox Hangman thing was, it started out as the Mox Hangman thing, which was really good, right? Because I remember, I, I remember liking that, too. But then it evolved into what it is now, which is awesome. I love that, getting, like, Ibushi yep. and all that. Like, it's it's awesome. I think it's... Spoiler. <laughs> it's one of, like, the best things they've done in a long time, right? Yep. And But then I think the Cole M. Jeff thing is just kind of, like, adding to, like, I think they're having a good year. And I don't think to say, I think to say it's Cole is discounting them a lot. And, like, we focused a lot on the entertaining segments and mm-hmm. stuff. The match they had was awesome. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, the Eliminator match was awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even That right was kind of the start of this. I right? love yeah. that match. Well, in their first promo segment the week before, yeah. that was really good, too. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think this is, like, a just kind of a surprise. Like, I wouldn't never expected this. At the beginning of the year, and also I think the beginning of the year, Cole still was yeah, M M I A. I think that's what you call it's it. It's just yeah. these but guys like, are it's really good, good yeah. and you're like they can be very enter- and just happen to have chemistry. Yeah, together. this is just a surprising high spot of their weekly television. Yep. So I'm um, very fun. I think like this is a good year for them because I feel like 2022 for the most part was missing like the big kind of story that we need. I yeah. don't think it was a bad year by any means because I think there's a lot to love last year, obviously, but. I feel like 2021 was the culmination of the Elite Story. And then like 2022 was like still a good year because I don't think it was b- bad by any means. No. Other than maybe the extended, extended jazz storyline. Yes. But like I think 2022 was kind of the cool down year for Big Story. And like 2022, I think it's really picked up. So I think it's just, it's a good year for wrestling. And I think AEW is doing really good. And this is like to make the show pass by that fast, I think is a good sign. Yep. I, I really like it. And I think they're sprinkled out nicely. And if in five years, the, the compliment this angle, the final thing I'll say about it probably is, okay. is like, if in five years you go to me, remember when MJF and Cole were in yeah, that? Yeah, it makes and some I'll reference like, to it and you remember And I'll it. be like, oh my God, that was so fun, right? Yeah. Like, that's the kind of thing. I feel like be. it'll be one of those things, because I think it's, like, surprisingly good, because I think it's fair to say we're not a big fan of, like, because WWE does it all the time, like, the can they coexist or, right. like, unlikely partners, but this is done, like... And I don't want to sound like I'm favoring AEW, but this is just done so well. If it's not lazy and you're trying, and, and again, the performers you have are perfect for it, mm-hmm. right? It, it's going to work. I think this is also one thing I've kind of forgotten to mention. This is elevating Cole's babyface run. Yeah. Very much. It me. is. Because I was, 
I was really hesitant at the beginning because yep. I like Cole's great no matter what, and I I love him. He's one of my favorites modern day. Yep, he. But you have a long track record of supporting. I, I I've loved him since he stepped in an X sure. I actually liked him a bit when he, in the tail end of his ROH run, and I don't know why. Just happened. He's just. He's um, a charisma but, boy. Right. And but like I was a little hesitant with the babies because I love heel Adam Cole. Heel Undisputed Air Leader Adam Cole was awesome, right? So but and like the Jazz View did not give me a lot of confidence. He was still doing good, but it did not give me a lot of confidence. And I don't think I'm I don't think I'm off base with that. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think this is really revitalized and like if this could propel him on the babyface run, and especially if they end up in a full blown title feud, because the eliminator, like you mentioned, was fantastic. It was awesome. But if they get a full on title feud, I think that'll be awesome. Yep. I so agree. I think this this has done a lot for them. Like this is, I hope it'll be a memorable thing. I think this will be. You could put this as a storyline of the year contender. Yep. I would probably, unfortunately, still pick. Blackpool and the Elite, obviously, but this would be the close Fun to up, talk about right? a nominee. Maybe that would be the feud of the year, and this could be the storyline, if be. you wanted to do that, yeah. right? Or Cole Ninja, we'll see what happens, but yep. I think they're both in the running for either It'll or. It'll come so. up in, in These our are the two, my two stuff. front runners so far, yep. right? Um, I enjoy it, too. And my match of the year is all but decided, just yeah, to mention it again. Yeah, that's going to be hard to beat. Unless they do another one. I don't know what that would take. But Omega Osprey 3. <laughs> yeah, but I won't be there, and I can't. <laughs> that's, like, I, and I'm going to admit, that's a factored in there. Like, it's a six-star match, whatever, if you want to say that. But, like, we were there. It's, it's so. the six-star match that I saw. Correct. Okay? It's, Correct. It's my six-star match, right? That's right. That's what it is. Um, so, just taking all these positives and throwing them out the window, we're going to talk about Jake Hager. Yes. Um, so, he goes in the locker room to talk to Jericho. Um, Hager asks if he's really considering joining Callus. Jericho says he doesn't really know. Wrong answer. <laughs> um, Callus makes some good points. Uh, he's, he needs some time to decide. Uh, Hager says it was a great moment, but they have history too. Uh, Hager says he's been in AEW with Jericho since day one, unfortunately. And it's about his career too. Until Jericho can be straight with him, you can't give him 100. And he hands Jericho the hat. Back. Oh my God. It must be serious. No. This ah. is. He gone loves that too hat, far. I think. I think he likes that hat. He does. I think he does. Um, so this is fine. I don't think Hager sounded completely horrible, which is the nicest thing I can say about him. True. Um, I just don't care, and I don't want Jericho joining them at all, so just making it. I cannot stress enough, I do not want this to happen. Yeah, I said this is a, diff- a decent way to add to the importance of Jericho's decision. I just wish I cared, because I don't either. I just wish he would stop I mean, you care teasing. very, very much, because you don't want anything him to join but i just i don't i cannot allow this this is the jericho i'm not super interested in now if pack joined callus which i'll mention again spoiler then that is perfectly okay yes but jericho is a not british b not a bastard c far older than pack is i'm pretty confident in the last one correct so doesn't work uh, next, we get a big time semifinal, and I do emphasize the big time. Yep. Uh, Ruby Soho versus Sky Blue. Nine minute match that got a commercial break in it again. Woo! Uh, there's a flatliner on the apron from Blue that was okay because Soho had sold it pretty good. Yeah. It um, did look good. Storm actually. sent Blue into the steel stairs, and the ref ejects her and Soraya. No. That's a shame. That's horrible. Uh, Nick Breaker from Blue uh, for two count. Uh, so he blocks the code blue, counters into a half crab, blue eventually calls the ropes. There was like the full Nelson where you like the you know, they spin on the face buster. Uh, blue hit that for two. Uh, blue looked for a dive, but um, so he caught her on the top rope, then pulled her no- off at the ropes. You know, a riot kick or no future, whatever they called it. No future, almost. Mm-hmm. Crazy. N- no super future. Um. Uh, and so he picks up the win. And uh, she'll face Will. I heard good things about Will versus Athena on Rampage, by the way. Honestly, w- Athena, because I've been sort of checking in with Ring of Honor, watched some episodes, watched chunks. She's cool. She's finally, like, since you and I personally turned her heel in Canada. <laughs> honestly, she's <laughs> I like I was a, also there. She's like a vicious, despicable heel, and I think she's super cool. This is kind of what we've been waiting for. You guys should for. be thanking Canada. So uh, I'm enjoying her run right now quite a bit. She should be, uh, my opinion, she should be pulled and put onto the like dynamite I proper. Think she could, yeah. Because uh, she's essentially, like essentially wrestling on dark right now. Burn. Right. She's good. Uh, so this match was fine, right? Clearly, they're looking to establish Sky Blue. They keep demonstrating that that is the case. I'm not fully convinced, but she looked decent here. Uh, no real issues with this, but not really any high points to it either. So 
See, there's a difference. There's investing in Nick Wayne, then there's investing in Sky Blue. Unfortunately, so. this is like a pretty standard women's match on Dynamite, right? Like, yeah. We should be getting better than this, but we don't, and it was fine. No, and like that, I don't. They need to do something. Like, can we not convert something? Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they can do. I don't. I would say you could convert Rampage to women's, but I don't know. Rampage kind of serves a purpose. Like, I don't know. Maybe not convert it into an outright women's show, but maybe make them more prominent on Rampage, at least. Yeah. Is that, like, the biggest compliment to them? No, because it's Rampage, and let's be honest, they're, it's not the biggest. But, like, something, because it would be more time for them. Like, something like Athena versus Willow, because I heard great things about that, and that was the main event uh, yeah. last night. So I, I heard that was really good. So, like, go stuff check like that, that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was fine, as well as good as you could expect. Blue's not very good, and Soho Sauce was fine. I saw some people surprised Blue's lost, but this is the result I fully expected. I could have seen it going either way, to be honest, just with the role Blue's been on. But then again, like, the women's division is the outcasts or whatever. Is yeah. that what they're called? And also they was so not memorable to be. It's and crazy. was so home. Well, oh, yeah, they're going to try this for like, and it's been going for months longer. But what what's going to live long in the memory? The outcasts or M. No. Jeff and Adam Cole? Correct. Right? So there's the difference. And I think that's also because um, Willow and Willow's in the final. So it'll be and Willow, you... Willow and Ruby. You don't give this division much time, and the vast majority of it is a faction we really don't care about. Like, this division is just If kinda... anything, I'm going to do everything in my power to forget it. They need to get Hater back and heat her up as a super baby Aww. face. Bring Athena I in as Hater's a heel gone. challenger, and away we go. Serena freaking Deeb. Statlander in the mix if you want, but she needs some character development. They all kind of do. I think... Um... Speaking of Athena, I think either we need either Athena or Deeb to be the next Deeb? TNA champion. Mm, I miss Deeb. I think because Statlander, Statlander deserves a good run. So obviously I'm not saying now, but like we build up either Athena or Deeb to take the title yeah. from Statlander. I think that would work. Because really well. they have a bunch of women I quite like, and they're just not like add Willow in that mix too. There's like probably Willow's good, yeah. Six to eight women that I think are really good. The division's not incredibly lacking right it's now. It's not. just they need, the effort needs to be Correct. more there. It's the not the talent, it's the booking of the talent. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um sorry. And then there's a I guess she's not a, in the women's division, mm -hmm. but the next segment is... Uh, next there's the world premiere of Harley Cameron's uh, music video. <laughs> I didn't take notes on it because it's just it's a rap movie. So honestly, I'd recommend, like, if you're curious, check it out. I'm not saying it's so good you need to check it out, I but... I thought it was amazing. Hey, no, I thought it was good. <laughs> I thought it was good. Um, I I'll, laughed I'll, several I'll, times. I'll, I thought it was... It was, it was like, because I think when we were watching a first promo, I disagreed. Like, I thought that was just not great. And I, I understand what you're trying to yeah. say, but I just don't think it's good. I think this was what you were trying to say. Like, the intentionally bad, so it was good. Because I thought it was the amusing. The tone like, of it was perfect, I it, thought. I thought, yeah, it was for what I think they were trying to accomplish. I think this was much better. This did a much better job of that tone than the the brief bit we yeah. got the other week. No, this like, this felt something. a lot more like what you were trying to say last week. And I feel and like... I, I think it was pretty good for that. The more that this group is about her and less about QT, I become more interested. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she still kind of hints that she's after bowens makes me oh laugh that's the too. my favorite part of this i right? love that so, like that's the part that made me laugh last week when she was she like she is easily the best thing qtv has given us mm -hmm. i don't know where she came from but i think and i don't know if she can wrestle at all i assume maybe not i don't know but i think in the role she's in she's pretty talented and yeah. she suits pro wrestling right so this i don't know this video i, I don't this is perfectly good i thought this perfectly was solid i mean hilarious yeah. i thought and to go from I, th I am starting a note on a QTV segment saying amazing, right? That is like infinite <laughs> improvement from previous stuff. So I, I think this is something people should check out yeah, too because I thought, I thought it was, it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, so next we get our main, or I guess our main event match. Uh, yep. Swerve Strickland versus Nick Wayne. And it was at this point where I, re I realized there was only a two-year gap between myself and Nick Wayne. My note, Jack suddenly realizes Nick Wayne is almost his age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, because I know he's, like, super young, right? And, like, he's, like, a, the prodigy or whatever. But, like, it only took me this long to register right. that, like, I'm really not that much younger than Correct. him. Correct. And, so therefore, I look like a failure in comparison. So, I've watched him wrestle at six, 16 before, which is basically you are almost 16, right? So, wow. you're going and working at the grocery store, and he's working indie matches. 
I'm ashamed of myself. Well, you well, weren't born into a family of wrestling with a. Re- I don't have. No, a no, 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 no. If he can, <laughs> if he can be doing this at 16, <laughs> no excuses. What's my excuse? No excuse. What's my excuse, huh? Hey, I'm just as skinny and scrawny. Okay, I could totally do. And that. And I built a ring in the garage. It's just sitting there. You know, <laughs> never. Yeah, used. it's just been sitting you there. You refuse to use it. Well, I'm just waiting for you to hurry. I need an excuse to get in. You got to have heart <laughs> issues or something. <laughs> no thanks. And then, therefore, I can get into it. I'll pass. Well, actually, you're not a wrestler, so you're not even. You're not. Is this, this is on you, actually? Yes. I could fault. be the next Nick Wayne, yep. and you're holding me back. Yep. This is this is all on you. This that is, reminds me of an episode, and I don't know why because I don't really watch the show, that I remember of um, Modern Family, where the daughter is <laughs> really? about to go to university, and she's supposed to write this entrance essay about adversity she's overcome or whatever, and she gets mad at her mother for like, I, you, my life basically was too easy, and it's because you never let me suffer or have any, it's, it's your fault I can't get into university because I can't write this. And so her mom's I like, I, I know which daughter that is. And then. so her mom is like, okay, so there is some adversity you've overcome that we didn't talk about. So just kind of like get in the car and come with me. And they're, okay, so they get in, right? And that this will help you write this essay for sure, no problem. And just kind of drives her into the middle of nowhere and leaves her there, basically. Because <laughs> <laughs> she was Very like, nice. the gall of you to say, like, my upbringing was too good. Like, you ra- it, my, it was too easy. I didn't have enough struggle. And that's why <laughs> your fault. Yeah. Uh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. This is your fault. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a pro wrestling prodigy because of me. You. That's yeah. right. You, you mother lacking. That's it. Yeah, but anyways, I was, I even sent it like, um, I sent a video of, I think it was the Poison Rana spot. I yes. sent it to Hancock because it's like, it just kind of blows my mind that he's like not that much older than me. Right. And he's here he is on freaking AEW. It's like, it's really cool, but it's just, it's kind of wild that he's like basically like, because what he just turned 18, yep. so he'd probably be a July baby, maybe, Could be. maybe late June. Like and they uh essentially two years older than me. Put him in there to start with Swerve because they've wrestled on the indies, right? And I saw their yeah, and I saw someone saying like Swerve's a guy like, and I know you'll agree like that. You should build your company around and like he's a future yep. champion. And yeah, I hope this is like somewhat of a wake up call for them with Swerve because I'm not saying they've treated him completely poorly other than when they stuck him with Parker Boudreaux and Trench. Um, but like uh, I think they could do a lot better with him. And I feel like I hope not just because of their indie history, but also like. Because Swerve's super reliable, that's why they put him with Wayne. Yes, and I hope like this is some. I think that's why this is like hopefully a wake up call. Like give him something. He's gone titleless in his singles career. July tenth, two thousand five. So he's two years and seventeen days older. Than Correct. Him. Wow, that's yeah. that's wild. Yeah, two thousand five. Jesus. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm hoping this is the start of better things for Swerve. Um, and I hope this starts off Nick Wayne great as well, and I think it will. Um, so there were some holes and counters in there going, and also, um, Craig, I did borrow notes from TTR because I just, I yeah. wanted to watch this. I needed to get my Nick Wayne impression in. So. Yeah, the whole start of this was like they know each other well; they're evenly matched, right? Yeah. Like familiarity. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Wayne won the first one because I think it was for the Defy Championship. Or Makes something. sense. Um, Wayne did a head scissors followed by a drop kick. Uh, there's a fisherman suplex for two. I thought it was really cool. Like he did the suplex and the way he like popped up into the bridge pin. I yeah. thought that was really it was a cool. little different and really really crisp. Yeah. yeah. So like. Ari, like, you can kind of tell, he's right? He's fluid, man. He's yeah, really yeah, fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes this a really great comment because Swerve's so, like, Swerve's just all about that. Um, Wayne went for a springboard center move. Uh, Swerve kind of blocked it, and then uh, Wayne kind of changed that into a standing slice bread for two, which is pretty cool. Or standing sheer new, I think it's called, mm-hmm. um, as well. I believe you. Um, <laughs> uh, Wayne went for a move off the turnbuckle. Uh, Swerve caught him. He hit um, two torture rack backbreakers, like, on his shoulders for two. Or... A la the Bella, as you want to call it, the rack attack. Of course you do. Yeah. Um, Wayne hit an avalanche poison runoff, all by Wayne's World, which is basically like his Oz cutter. Yeah, out of the corner, right? Yeah. That was a good cor- near fall. Oz cutter out of the corner for a near fall. Oz cutter from the um, rematch of the century. Love that, was, that was in there. Love the avalanche run, oh, yeah. poison runoff. I'm sorry, I got to mention. I, when I rewatched it, I rewatched, like, there was the part where he went for the Oz cutter and Omega just lifts up the knee and it's just. Yeah. It's so good. How oh, many times have you watched that match now? Uh, That was my third time watching it, including the live. That's the second time I watched it because we watched it when once we came together. Home. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I've made, I'm trying to make a vow to watch it once a month. Fair. It's a good and goal. Just, good to have it, goals. It, yeah. Attainable goals are important for anyone. Exactly. It'll never leave my mind. And then December, I'll be ready to be like, oh, yeah, I like that match. Right. Yeah. Because you might forget match. otherwise. Oh, yeah. I might forget. You never know. Because <laughs> you're me. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, we went to what show? <laughs> <laughs> what did we go to? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Impact. That's the one we're Could thinking be. of. Yeah. Um, where am I? Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Uh, we went for Hurricane Ron off the top, Swerve counter and Power Bomb. That was really good. It was. And, then he re- and he just killed him with the house call. Like He did. That, like, there are some good ones, but that might be one of the best ones I've ever seen. Because just the way Wayne's head, like, jerks off of it, it as he hits, like, it's it looks like, if you want to talk about making wrestling look real, that's as legit as something could look. Because that looked like it absolutely just, like, the whiplash on it. Like, that could that looks like a concussion-worthy kick it right there. It looks great. And again... The thigh slap is totally like that's not how real sounds work, mm-hmm. but it just makes it for me because it it's just I feel it would still look good, but there's something so much more satisfying about like s- like the visual representation of that, and then the sound as well. It's just it's perfect. So Wayne sold it nice. And then also he did like he uh, held his arm back behind him with his foot, like he was like he had Wayne on the ground and he was holding his arm back. He snapped his left arm with looked with good. his leg. That looked really cool too. And I think there was a snap on that too. Again. The sound makes it right, mm-hmm. and then he like picked him up like Wayne's arm is just kind of like limp, and he he pins him with a JML driver. Uh, Swerve actually wins here, which I found a little surprising. Like I'm not saying Wayne needed a win, but I just kind of assumed he would win. In that's his the debut typical, in a main event, yeah. but I and think they're telling a story. With yeah, this no, kid. I think it works. So I thought a really good debut for Wayne, a uh, solid win for Swerve. I'm happy he picks up the win. Uh, I thought the second half of it was really good. There was some really cool stuff. Um, is it? Really, a super amazing main event? Maybe not, but this is an 18 year old kid. I don't know. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good as well. And the crowd's already behind him. They're building a baby face. Uh, second half of this, I thought was pretty great. And some, a couple really mm-hmm. believable near falls. Yeah. Right? I think so, it's really good, especially considering this dude, again, he's two years older than myself. So yep. here I am sitting talking in a basement. And here he is having like wrestling a, in a main a event. A fully worthy TV main event. So I was, I was impressed. I'm, it seems like you are, and I'm glad because. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to get a lot of Nick Wayne for a lot of years, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I didn't want to be disappointed. I don't think he disappointed at all. I think he worked He worked a match about as good as anyone on the roster, which is a great thing to say about an 18-year-old. Like, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm not saying, like, it was, like, average. I'm saying it was really good. And, it was. Like, it was about as good. Like, it was better than some people could, yep. right? Um, so I think that's really good for someone so young. Like, he can, he's got a lot of longevity in the company, if he says. Obviously, like, because I feel like most young debuts are, like, at the beginning of your 20s mm-hmm. like you don't get like a lot of nick waynes or thea hales right? and it makes she, sense, she like, was 19 right if he's been training since nine years old he has a ton of experience just in the ring getting reps right and and that is huge right. so he's put in mm-hmm. nine years of training already. yeah uh the poison on a cutter spot was pretty sweet he sold some sort of offense perfectly. like the house call was just i anytime he hits a good house call it's, just, it's so worth mentioning because it's like it's such a simple move. It's so perfect. That's why I can't wait to get an AEW swerve and get out of the basic figure. Yeah. Which I have one there. Yeah. Um, because like you can't do it with the basic that good, but it's it's so it was perfect and like I mean obviously swerve nails it because he's got that down that he's so smooth and he's got he that is. that move specifically down to a science. But uh, Wayne deserves big props for selling it like that because that looked absolutely killer. Somewhere down the line, these two as a tag team would be super be fun too. Yeah. Um, I'd like imagine Swerve on Glory against Wayne and someone because Keith Lee would just smash him. He that would. would be funny. Um, I was a little surprised Swerve won, but like you said, it, it can also make sense as well. Um, Wayne showed out here for sure, so I'm looking forward to more and hopefully, like, he goes on to good things. Yep. Uh, next, we get the fifth men announcements for Blood and Guts. Yeah, I closed my laptop, thought the show was over, and forgot. And you're like, what are you doing? I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I think this is a good way to close the show. I don't want, you wouldn't want, like... It was pretty big. It was a pretty it big It would. I feel like it would overshadow if something went after this. Like, if Wayne went after this. I yeah. feel like it, it, it works. No, this is a pretty big payoff. Mm. To uh, Cal said his fifth member will join the Blackpool Comic Club in the Blood and Guts match, which is good, because I was worried the fifth member of their team might not join them. Until or after. Right? Yeah, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll come after the match. Or he'll help them before the match. He'll beat them down before the match. And be like, oh, oh, see, see ya. See yeah. ya, yeah, yeah. Um, so Cal said, uh, there's nobody more deserving of this abuse than Kenny Omega. It says he knows the real Kenny Omega, who's a coward and a punk. Um, Omega made his entrance to go after Don Callis, and Mox and Takesha were there to meet, to meet him. Um, I don't know where they came from, because they didn't come from behind. They I know, like, and he came out by himself. He made a big deal out of that, I they came right? from the crowd or whatever. I guess. Takesha's looking cool still. Just he is. Just worth, worth noting. Yep. And then, um, Omega gets blasted from behind with a steel chair. It was a protected... Shot to the back of the head. Correct. I guess that would be how you do that. Yeah. If you wanted to do a protected shot to the back of the head, I guess that's that would be how you do it. And Permission it's not granted. other than 
uh, Mr. Pack. Yeah. So I got spoiled on that. I was like, I was surprised. And I, I knew you'd be happy about that. Love Pack. Um, and he's got his beard trimmed up. Like, he looks more like, because I remember I saw a clip of Neville, uh, King of the Cruiserweights Neville, and his beard is more trimmed. So it, it looks more like Neville. And it makes sense. Um, oh, yeah. It makes perfect sense. Um, Omega was held. Uh, Cal stomped on Omega's head in the ring. Um, Pack grabbed a mic. He told Omega that he had no... He has no idea how long he's waited for this. And he mentioned Omega being responsible for his broken nose, Omega and by extension, the elite. Um, Pac said that he's the fifth member, just to clarify for y'all. Um, and um, Omega pays the price. <laughs> um, Omega's down the mat with a chair on his neck and Pac's on the top rope. I like how he just stands on the top rope. It's just, it's cool. Um, Moxley asks for any last words. Um, and Omega says they have a fifth member too. Check the screen. Then we get a video on the Tron to announce Kota Ibushi. Booyah. As the final member of the Elite team, now the Golden Elite. Golden Elite, indeed. Back, baby. Yeah, awesome. Two, I thought it was really well done because you know I love Pac. He's one of my I favorite think, wrestlers yeah, in the world. His, but he's not the big... A lot of people think, oh, it's Pac. You it, know? He, his thing got time to breathe, too. And But right? then you end with what you need to, which is, yes, Kota Ibushi, which is a huge thing for him to come. I think most people, I, like some people might not be, will be like, oh, yeah, it's back. I'm actually pretty happy with that. because It makes sense. He's we haven't amazing. seen him since, like, the beginning of the year. Because the lat, and I think it makes perfect sense because Pac's, like, great pick. He's, he's so much, he's great as a heel, right? Yes. So, obviously, it works. But I genuinely didn't expect him either. I was either going with, like, Ono or someone some else. crazy stuff. Bro. Oh, yeah. Pound for pound, he's one yeah. of the best wrestlers He in the actually world. surprised me. He's sick, and he's also got history with Kenny Omega, including it was literally the last thing we saw him do before this right. was fight the Elite. That's literally the last thing we've seen him yep. do, so it makes perfect sense. Oh, I was super happy mm-hmm. with the way bo- a, both of the announcements and the way they made both of them, I thought was a really, mm-hmm. really good main event segment. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought it was a really good segment. Of course, Kota freaking Ibushi, finally. Yep. Um, not there in person, but I think it also makes it more exciting to see Ibushi next week, and that'll be really cool. Um, this is honestly looking like the ble- best Bell and Guts to this point, in my opinion. I think um, so. I like everybody in the field. Like, I like the Bucks. I like Omega. Love Hangman. Like Ibushi from what I've seen many moons ago. Um, love Takeshita. Eh. Yep. Uh, like Pac. Uh, and Blackpool has just been on fire. So I think everyone in this match is great. And the storyline is so much better than the other ones with the Inner Circle and the Pinnacle and then jazz and then blackpool and eddie kingston and all them you know that yeah um i think like it the blood and guts doesn't feel super forced here because because i feel like last year especially um because obviously the first one was the first one so that's fine but i feel like boy was it, was it the, the second or sorry the first blood and guts was like didn't they already have the stadium stampede and it was like the blood and guts felt kind of unnecessary the yeah. first time right the yeah I think that's them. Right. so yeah that the first one felt unnecessary and then i feel like last year it kind of fell into the war games trope where it feels kind of forced or yeah, I think war games, war games sometimes feels forced. I think sometimes I obviously I like it cause it was undisputed air. Most but of the sometimes time. the story doesn't feel like it necessitates right. the match. Right. Yeah. Or it's just like teams for the sake yeah. of it. Right. Um, so that one felt kind of forced last year, but I feel like this one just, it feels earned. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially with the elites win at for Ben door. Mm-hmm. Like it feels like a tiebreaker. It feels earned just for the feud. And there's so many, uh, dynamics in play now. Like there's the elite, um, I was in Blackpool and Takeshita and Omega, um, because the Callus, there's Pack and Omega now, um, Abushi just existing there. Yep. Um, it's super cool. So, um, I thought it was a great conclusion of the show as well. Really nice segment. It was super well done. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about Pack. Like, obviously, I'm most excited about Abushi because I've been I'm thrilled with both for that for weeks. But I'm I'm super happy about Pack too because I think. I was I was really hoping for Chris here, but I think that was a tad unrealistic. That was more the dream pick. Yeah. But um, I think like realistically, Pac is a fantastic pick. Me too. He so um, I'm super excited for next week. Blood and Guts should be sweet. Should be awesome. I mm-hmm. maybe even try to watch it live. I don't know. I yeah. got a basketball practice, but we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Uh, so overall, man, I really enjoyed this show. We watched it all in one sitting, which to be honest, we don't do very often, right? The first hour and 15 minutes flew by. Um, a lot of credit to MJF and Cole on this show, right? Multiple segments, a match, um, post-match stuff. I really like the Nick Wayne vignette. I really mm-hmm. like the Harley what, Cameron. Um, video. So I thought a lot of the segments were really, really entertaining on this show. And then match-wise, like I liked the opener with Commander and Jericho. Mm-hmm. I liked the main event. Um, I did like the tag team match with Cassidy, Allen, and Garcia Guevara as well. I'm just trying to decide. I'm kind of thinking between a couple. And even the like Big Bill... Cage MJF oh, I really like that was match. fun yeah. 
So you know what? I'm convinced on the strength of segments and then matches, nothing blo that blew me away, but all a lot of it really good. I'm going to go A- minus because I just thought the entertainment of this show with the mostly, again, Cole and MJF stuff throughout was just really, really fun. So I'm going to go A- minus this week. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty fair, and I'll, I'll look through it. Um, I think, like, um, I think the opener wasn't the hottest start, but it, it was okay. Like, it was fine, and the segment after was fine. Um, but I think, like, a lot of the segments, like you said, were really strong. Like, anything I'm Jeff Cole in the show, I thought yep. was awesome, and I really liked their match, too, despite, like, the lack of legitimate wrestling. Um, I thought, like, they were super entertaining. That made the show fly by, so that's a good plus. Um, just making it, like, not feel it like... It felt like nothing. The yeah, first hour like and a quarter felt yeah. like half an hour. I thought the Allen Cassidy Jazz match was pretty solid as well. Um, Nick Wayne's vignette was really nice. Um, the women's match was short enough to be not really much of a factor. Uh, Jericho and Hager was whatever, and then the main event was really good. Harley Cameron was pretty solid, and the final segment was really good as yeah. well. Um, so I would agree with A minus. I think this was a really strong show. Me too. Um, Love and to have an A range. I show. guess it's kind of a go home for Blood and Guts, but I feel like like especially the send off was really good. Yep. To send you off until Blood and Guts. Absolutely, really a well. really good final segment as your go home into what mm -hmm. basically feels like a pay per view. Collision match, ain't right? touching that, yo. No, it's great. Really good show. Glad to have it uh, be so strong. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move into a little bit of trivia where we see what AI thinks it knows and Jack <laughs> corrects it quite a bit in a segment we call Off the Top of His Head. All right, so the WWE Network was on and randomly Triple H was refereeing a match. I don't even remember what it was. Do you remember? It was just like yesterday. Triple H was ref. It was Brian and Cena in uh, 2013. So we'll see if that comes up because that's what I went with. I went, I asked... AI, chat GPT, can you briefly describe 15 times where a WWE ref wrestler acted as a referee in a match? Okay. All right. So here's what we'll get. The first one, I'm going to see if you can get it. According to them, special guest referee at WrestleMania 23. Was there one? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it was Austin. It right? was. It was, it was um, Lashley and Umanga. And what was the stipulation? It if was the shave your head. It was the Battle of the Billionaires. Correct. Thing. So it's right. All right, good. Special guest referee at WrestleMania 19. 19. 19. A clash between two legends. Could this be wrong? Was it Hogan? And Hogan and? Piper? They're saying it was Hogan and Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah, Hogan and Vince. Was the ref Piper? No. It was the ref. Was it Austin? No, it wasn't. No, it couldn't be. Again, it, I'm going by what they're saying here. I No, I, it could be perfectly. They're saying it's The Rock. I don't think so. No, wait, at 19? Yeah. No, because The Rock was facing Austin. There you go. Uh, guest referee at WrestleMania 28. What year would that be? 2012, I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead. End of an era match? Oh, yeah, right. I believe if that helps yeah, you. Yeah, it was Trips and Correct. Tucker and the Michaels of the Ref and Hell in a Cell. Correct. All right. So, so maybe they actually knows a bit on this one. So a special guest referee, SummerSlam 2010. SummerSlam 2010. I should know. I, I know. But I it's, forget. well, again, if they're right, between WWE Champion and Challenger. Was it Orton yes. Barrett? No. No, it wouldn't have been Orton and Barrett. Close. Like Orton and Sheen. Correct. Who would the ref be? Oh, I, oh, you didn't get that part. I don't I, know. Again, if this is right. I don't know. You might have to fact check it. John Cena. That's SummerSlam 2010? Yeah. No, he was in the Nexus match. There you go. So they're wrong. Uh, special, guest, special guest referee at Judgment Day 2000. WWE Championship match. Oh, it was, it was Michaels, right? He's the ref, and then it was... That was Trips and Rock. So they, they're saying Trips and Rock, but they're saying Undertaker was the referee. I don't think... I, don't, I think I'm pretty confident in saying Undertaker's never ref anything. I'm pretty in confident life. in that, too. I'm pretty sure it's Shawn Michaels. Because so, he cost Rock a fall. What about WrestleMania 28? Um, didn't you just say that? Did we? Yeah, it was Taker and Trips. Oh, they're saying a different one now. 
Really? Taker and Trips, but a different referee? What? Triple H is the... Oh, no. Is it a different match? No, it's the, it did duplicate it. You're right. <laughs> wow. Special guest referee at Survivor Series 2001. Winner-take-all elimination match between two teams. This is the alliance in the... Yes. Who is a ref? A, well, according to this. I don't think so. I think you're going to say he was in the match. Who? A veteran. Kurt Taker? Angle. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is in the match. He was like the <laughs> pivotal would. point in that match. Uh, WrestleMania 22 special guest referee. Adding a hardcore element to the contest, it says. Foley and Edge didn't have a ref. Foley and Edge is the match. I don't think they had a guest ref. Do you want to know who they say the guest ref is? Who? Love you, chat GPT. Don't ever change. Mick Foley. I'll read you the whole thing verbatim. Okay. Number eight. Mick Foley as special guest referee at WrestleMania 22. Foley was the guest referee for the match between Edge and Mick Foley himself, <laughs> adding a hardcore element to the contest. Disagree. <laughs> Uh, guest referee. I mean, I was pretty confident they didn't have a ref, so I guess there's Money that. in the Bank 2013 in a WWE Championship match. No, I don't think so. So it's. Saying, I swear to God, if you say Cena and Daniel Bryan, saying it was between Cena and Mark Henry, that is a match that happened. Uh, who's the ref? Bryan. I don't think so. Go ahead and let check. Me, let me look Money now. in the Bank 2013. Next one. Special guest referee at Backlash '99. I have no idea. Uh, oh, was it, wouldn't that be Shane, I think? I feel like Vince? Shane. It'd be match between Stone Cold and The Undertaker. Is that Vince and Shane? The Rock. Uh, Probably okay. feels wrong. Okay, hold on. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't say anything here about Dan and Brian being the... Dan and Brian was in Money in the Bank, so... Yeah, no. so probably... Backwash 99, I'll look at that, too. So they're saying in The Undertaker... Rock is the referee. That's interesting. Austin Undertaker. Uh, results. Uh, Undertaker... To beat Ken Shamrock and Austin B. Rock. So. <laughs> and Shane, Shane was the guest ref. So for you're that. more right. Uh-huh. Survivor Series 97. Okay. Um, wow, is this wrong? Is it Brett and Sean? It is. Okay, there's no. No way. Because the Hebner was the ref. That's famous. Yeah. So they, you know who they're you saying? You know that. I do know that. Uh, so so they're saying. I'll read it verbatim. Vince okay. McMahon as special guest referee oh. at Survivor Series. No, because he literally he comes down and gets spit on. Yeah, and then gets punched backstage. Yeah, so that's very wrong. <laughs> special guest referee at WrestleMania X Seven Street Fight. It was. Oh my God, this is so stupid. What was the street fight? It was Shane and Vince. So if one of those were to referee themselves, <laughs> who would you choose? Uh-huh. Shane. Shane was the ref. I for... feel like there might have been a guest ref. But I don't think there was. It wasn't him though. Refing no. and wrestling. No. Um, special guest referee. No way out. Twenty. Sorry, two thousand two. Mm, I don't know. Between Jericho and Austin, I think they're wrong because they're saying Stephanie McMahon. I don't think so. What was that one? Sorry. Um, I'm just looking at Shane defeat Mr. McMahon. Uh, Mick Foley was guest ref. There, you I, go. there was a guest ref at least. So that one, the next one was No Way Out 2020. Sorry, 2002. And who are they saying? Jericho Stone Cold. And then it was Stephanie. Steph as the ref. At least we know it'll say if there's a ref. Um, where is it? Austin Jericho. No, nothing. Nice. Uh, quick, where are they pulling this out? Of? Last couple because this one is not going well. SummerSlam 2004. Um. Oh my God! Never mind. It's another one. It's saying Orton refereed a match between Orton and Benoit. That match happened, but okay. Then let's try it. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Last one. Vengeance two thousand five. Um, Who did Batista wrestle? Uh, Triple H. Yep. And then Batista refed it as well. What? Why? Chat GPT. You're lazy. What are they you're on? Lazy. What are they on? Terrible. But anyways, that's what we got this week. I apologize. That one was not the the. It it was very wrong, but not in a way that's fun. Like just too many lazy. You're refing your own matches. This is horrible. AI figured out. Anyways, all right. So let's get back into the world of wrestling, where we take a look at what we liked and didn't like from all the other stuff we watched. We call it high spots and rest holds. Fine. All right, so tell me about uh, Raw first, then. Uh, yeah, the one like minor wrestle I had was uh, Rousey got the better of Baszler this time. 
I mean, that sucks, but it also could mean that Baszler gets the her come up gets or sorry, Rousey gets her come up I guess. Well, ba- Baszler's a heel, so I feel like you get true. Comeuppance, but no, it just like bothers which me is funny because I honestly just, forget. Yeah, because nobody's rooting for Ronda Rousey. I'm just walking on eggshells, eggshells here. Yeah, That's, yeah, I'm walking on eggshells here because. I don't trust them with Baszler. No, of course speaking. not. So you shouldn't. I gotta, I gotta, no be, I gotta be wary in this suit, especially when it's yeah. Rousey. Agreed. So that's yeah. Uh, then another wrestle I had from Raw was uh, Miz beating Champa in a no DQ match. Yeah, why? Because uh, he had help from Bronson Reed. I guess that's the only way, right? And the match was pretty run in the mill, but I'm assuming he paid Reed again in kayfabe. But um, the only upshot is perhaps it makes DIY need to come together. Yep. But I still would have liked Champa to stay. But strong. isn't Gargano like, just, hurt or something? I don't know. I heard something. Like I saw something about him. I didn't read it. But yeah. Like anyways, I just I don't know. It's kind of annoying that he just beat Champa already. Like I don't know. Right. Um. Is that it for Raw? Hmm? Are you um, done? Raw? Yeah. And then I have SmackDown and Rampage. Okay. So NXT, you showed up just as I started watching it. So you were, I hesitate to say watching it, but you were in the room for a good chunk of it. So. High spot, I thought there was a solid in-ring interaction to start the show. You had Judgment Day, obviously. They're sort of, it seems to be like they bookend the major stars when they come from main roster. So they start out, um, and Mello and Trick sort of come out afterwards. So Balor and Priest talk about that they are back home, but now uh, this is it's just kind of a back and forth, right? This is Mello and Trick's house. Uh, Balor beat Mello on Raw, but now they're on Mello's court, and things are going to be different. And I thought everybody except Priest sounded pretty good. Um, with Dom, really generates a reaction from the crowd. Eh, like mm-hmm. people hate that guy. Uh, I I think he's pretty entertaining, honestly. Mm-hmm. I thought it was it wasn't an amazing, but I thought it was a solid start to the show. And I get putting Judgment Day out there right away. You're trying to do ratings and stuff, right? So, um, sort of having them to start and end the show makes sense to me. A rest hold. I thought this was kind of funny. Um. Mackenzie talking to Tony D'Angelo, remember, somehow. that So she basically summarizes the entire situation for Tony D'Angelo, and it's just basically like Tony doesn't know what's going on. But it was short, and it's kind of just him going, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I can trust Stax. And it honestly felt like it was just there to recap the whole story for anybody that, like, hey, if you just tuned in because of Judgment Day, mm-hmm. here's what's going on with this story, right? A uh, brief recap that was pointless to anyone who's been watching. On the plus side, I felt like Tony was dialing his uh, accent back a little bit, which I think he needs to do all the time and even more <laughs> if possible. Uh, Resthold, you saw the GG. Just jump in if you have any comments on anything because you were kind of watching. GG Dolan vignette, um, I thought, again, sounding unnatural. And the only thing of interest is uh, some images of Kiana, Kiana James, right? Mixed in to show that she's not different from Gigi. So did you get what was going on here? I didn't... So I, this thing is like Gigi going, wanna... Gigi going, we're not that different, you and I. And then showing pictures of Kiana James, like being a normal person. And, yeah. and being like, you were a normal having person. a messy hairstyle and looking kind of goofy and silly. And, and maybe fun. partying a little. So let me ask you. First of all, I don't think any of these pictures should bother Kiana James because none of them were scandalous or any like close to it, right? In the era of social media and people having embarrassing stuff surface, these are nothing, right? But she's still super upset by them. So how does that make Gigi Dolan the baby face? Because she's basically like going and si- like pulling up images that she knows this woman doesn't want out in public and putting them out in public yeah. and being ha ha laugh at you i'm the baby face i guess it, i don't think it's like laughing at her i think it's because like is it Keon, like you try to come across as Mrs. Yeah, business and, and you're not it, but she's like or like she used to be normal and now she's like covering up or it's more like she's ridiculing Gigi, and Gigi's like but you were like that and then kian is shown in a segment right after i thought that was the weird part where and she's, she's like, like oh, embarrassed yeah. about it right like she's 12 years old and it was like these I don't know, man. This is just such yeah, a... Yeah, that, like, that was the weird part. It's more juvenile stuff, right? And I don't think Gigi sounds natural ever, so I was not a fan of this. Uh, I thought the a solid mid-card tag match, right? I think you were watching that. Chase U, they ended up defeating Gulak and Dempsey when Thea Hale actually puts Gulak in the Kimura out on the floor. And then Chase U hit. It wasn't a great-looking one, but they hit the frat liner to uh, Charlie Dempsey after 11 minutes. I just thought really good action with Hudson kind of playing the powerhouse, right? Because he is a pretty big dude. 
and then Chase is kind of the energy guy, and they work well together, I think. I, I feel like they're going to kind of push pause on the imminent Duke Hudson turn because I think these mm -hmm. guys are working really well together right now. Yeah, I now. feel like that could be like the butch kind of thing. Right. Where they're going to like... Just wait. But for now, yeah. this is working. So um, it's they're mid-card fodder still, but again, they can have good matches and the crowd can support them and they don't really need to win. So, uh, And it's hard when you're watching to... Because even your brother was in the room, right? And he's like, all those people in the... So it's hard to tell how much of the Chase U reaction is organic because it's a tiny arena. Yeah, and they've had that portion of, There's like, forever. There's a whole segment of plants in there, right? So it sounds like the reaction is amazing, but it's kind of hard to tell how much is natural yeah. versus I feel the like um, you have to gauge that on the next, like, yeah. on, at Great American Bash or something. Right. Uh, I thought another really interesting Von Wagner segment, it's crazy to say, but... Um, so he basically, they they highlight him power bombing Bernal through the table, right? It's just Vaughn and Stone chatting in an empty arena, I think it was, yeah. basically. And they're, Yeah, they're on like a ring, like probably PC or something. Right, and that basically this is all how he was treated as a kid, and it basically made him snap. Um, and now he feels like himself and is sort of learning how to deal with fans cheering him because it's the first time he's ever been supported by anybody, right? Um, and again, sort of some graphic imagery about what he went through as a kid and like just being treated as a monster because of the skull surgery he had. So Von Wagner's delivery is still not good. Don't get me wrong, but at least they're giving him, I find these segments pretty captivating, right? Captivating and rooted in reality, right? So you're taking, we say this a lot on this show, like taking a bad actor and letting them talk about real stuff almost always helps instead mm -hmm. of scripted stuff, right? So I don't know what you thought. I thought this was really good. I think it's weird that kids would make fun of him for that. But I mean, I'd like they would. Kids are cruel, though, like right? Monster. Anyone different, though, yeah, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. And maybe he's playing it up a little bit, but it's yeah. believable regardless. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a villain origin story. I thought the Cora Jade match was basically an extended squash and not great. Um, It was, oh my God, who was it? The most, because I just have the most recent gymnast training to wrestle. Um, Kalani. Yeah, Jordan. Kalani Jordan, right? So Jade's inexperienced, not very good. Jordan even more so. So it's about what you would expect. And then you've got good old Dana Brooke, the reason we're all tuning in to watch NXT these days, right? Attacking Cora Jade after the match. And my note says, I can't think of a wrestler I'd rather see less than Dana Brooke. Possibly. Um, it's close. Uh, Omos. Oh, oh. Close. Yeah. Have mm -hmm. to think about it. Um, I'll get back to you. Anyways. Um... Another thing I thought was really strange, did you notice seven people watching an iPad of the So remember they showed highlights of the underground match with uh, Oh yeah. And then there's like a group of trainees, like seven people watching on an iPad and Dijack walks by and isn't happy about it. Um and this was like Dijack just looks and sounds silly, but I mean, if it's going to get us a Thorpe match with Thorpe, I think is where yeah. it's heading. It's it's fine, I guess, I don't know. High spot loved uh, the Breaker Dragonov match. Were you paying attention to that? I think. No. You saw a few things though, for Maybe. sure. The anti-air spear you saw. I did see that. And the clothesline. Uh, I short... saw that too. So uh, really good physical fifteen-minute match. Um, and I got more notes than usual for high spots and rest holds, just because I got into the match. You had early on a nice counter of the leaping kick Dragonov does. Uh, Braun just kind of grabs him and slams him. I thought was good. Um. And Dragunov hangs on. There's like a suplex from the inside out by Braun, but Dragunov hangs on and ends up suplexing Braun kind of from the apron to... Anyways, it looks really cool. It, it's hard to do it safely. It looks good. Uh, Bra there was one botch. You remember that? I know you saw that too. Um, The top rope bulldog. Oh, yeah, that was weird. Where he looked more like he kind of maybe forearmed a him. A glancing like forearm or a clothesline, yeah. You got a DVD in the corner by Dragunov, now banned by AEW. Um, there was a coast-to-coast -coast by Dragunov to Braun's knee. Um, Dragunov hits the Torpedo Moscow clean, which has been pretty protected, right? Braun kicks out, which is awesome. And then this is where Braun, I, I put caps lock, kills Dragunov with the spear as Dragunov comes off the ropes. Just looked fantastic. Again, his spear is good, especially when it's somebody coming off Yeah, the ropes. He, he comes in so late, like it's like a really An jerk explosive, reaction. explosive, yeah. yeah. It looked great. Dragunov then counters the press slam of uh, Braun Breaker into a DDT and a power bomb for a near fall. He hits his falling forearm that I thought was a believable near fall. And then Braun just absolutely decapitates him with the clothesline that was really, really stiff. 
You get a running knee and torpedo Moscow to the back of the neck, and Dragunov does win here clean. I thought the this power of the, the facial hair. I thought this was an awesome match, and that's two really good matches for Braun in a row now, who is much more interesting as a heel. Dragunov, if you give him time, his match is good. I think that's just how it is at this point. Great TV match positions Dragunov as a believable contender for the title, and it seems like that's where they're going. Um, kind of face versus face, but we'll get there. I also really liked um, Dirty Dom, as they're calling him now, at every chance they get. <laughs> it's the new Seth freaking Rollins. So you, you remember this little segment where he came in and challenged Wesley? Yeah. I quite liked it, because he's kind of like, basically, like, just a D-bag, right? And like, so I hear you're the open challenge guy, I'll take an open challenge. And Wesley's kind of like, I haven't really been doing that lately, you know what I mean? And then Dom's just like... Oh, of course, because I'm the one open challenging. You stop the challenge, right? And just so, so I kind of like yeah. the interaction here. Um, he is reminiscent of uh, sleazy Eddie Guerrero. He really is. Like, I think his character work I, I like much better than his in ring stuff right now. But I think he's a really hateable heel. Uh, and the crowd, yeah, he's hates all right. Him. Rest hold. It's my monthly mention. Booker T's terrible. Um, in the. In the calculus of like if NXT oh, yeah, he's pretty bad when I hear him. is good or bad, he is always a negative, okay? And the one during the Ivy Nile Tiffany Stratton match, which by the way wasn't very good. I won't go into details, but it would be a rest hole. I'm just gonna mention it casually here. Not very good. Um he says and I quote, I think I got it verbatim. Booker T says, Hotty Biscotti, give me a cup, right? Talking about Tiffany Stratton <laughs> and um Vic what's his name? Vic Joseph. His response is something like, Booker, it's been eight months of this. A biscotti is a cookie, not a drink. <laughs> and Booker T just goes, it's whatever I want it to be. Right? He doesn't even make sense. And then when he's confronted with like, hey, you're not making sense, he's like, too bad. It is what I say it is. Right? And then he also, if you ever are watching with me again, notice anytime Vic asks him, asks him a direct question, Booker yeah. starts rambling yeah, and yeah. never answers the question. Yeah. Right? He just starts saying, like, I don't, yeah, I don't know why they brought him back. He's awful. Anyways, uh, I thought it was funny. There was a little tweet from Noam Dar with a picture of him looking kind of disheveled that he's basically canceling sh- uh, Supernova sessions this week because he can't handle not having the cup. And he looks disheveled holding a bottle of alcohol in the picture. I thought it was a really quick way, something different to, to get that point across. I thought there was a quick Davenport interview that it was pretty decent, basically directed towards Roxanne Perez. Davenport saying that she's a woman, Roxanne's a little girl, and that um, Roxanne will be resilient and come after Davenport again, but Davenport will put it on the shelf like she has with, who now? Wendy Chu, Nikita Lyons, and Saul Ruka. Um, I thought she sounded kind of good here, like a badass looking to hurt people, right? Um, So... <laughs> The, do you want to run over the whole Stax Tony D? I put it rest hold Stax Tony D situation. In the, do you remember the match for? I don't remember much of the match, but so basically you get Stax essentially double crosses Gallus, right? I guess is what it was. Yeah, you yeah, you were telling me he was supposed to lie down or something. He was supposed to lie down for um, Joe Coffee in this match, and it looks like he's going to, and you can hear them talking about it, and he takes. The problem, I think, was he takes uh, Joe Coffey's finishing clothesline, but the crowd don't know it's a finisher, so they did not really a reaction to it. Uh, but yeah. then Stax kicks out of this was the scheduled, like, you're going to take a dive. So it was actually Gallus. He was um, betraying here. And then we get the crowbar spot and an Eddie Guerrero spot. And basically, well, I think Wolfgang ends up holding the crowbar and maybe they get thrown out. I don't remember. Stax hits his knee drop curb stomp thing that he does. It's so lame. And wasn't it like mid-match Tony D? There's a call from yeah, him. Yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> patched in um, during a, a rest hold in the match, right? And it's suddenly like, I think it was like a chin lock. And then, oh, there's Tony D on the phone. Like how or why does this happen? But Why would the prison allow that? As the American justice system dictates uh, and it's not familiar to us tony d is now a free man because of uh his friend winning a match here so just really cheesy and annoying uh and gallus and especially joe coffee look kind of stupid here right um this story was just full of swerves for no reason and that didn't really have any effect for me Mm -hmm. you pointed this out and i'll let you talk about it creeds in schism question mark 
Yeah, that's just how they stay around, I guess. So, but explain it, because I don't know if people know. Uh, the schism walked by, and always, the the diet are now perfectly fine because they won a match. So they won the loser leaves NXT match. Right, and so the creeds so are out of NXT, and the diet's all happy now, which sucks because now they're stuck in this. And um, then there's like a bunch of random followers and masks, and so two that's of them. All I noticed is oh, two of them not- are clearly the creeds. Right. So all I noticed, and you pointed out. So all I know is, wow, they're kind of all of a sudden have a whole group of people with them, kind of like the design was doing in yeah, Impact. Yeah, or the Creepers of the Dark Order. And so two of them clearly kind of pause or are separated from the group, and you pointed out their sizes exactly match Creed's, right? Yeah. So it doesn't feel I like I saw someone else point that out, and I was like, oh, yeah. High spot, I thought there was a solid main event tag team match. Um, and Booker, which I didn't love either, they're talking about Priest being money in the bank and that he... Uh, winner and that he could technically cash it in. I know you'll disagree on Mello for the NXT Championship. I think that's, there's a more of an argument for that than a mid card title because at least sure. like for this show, that's their main title. True. It's the NXT equivalent of a main title. And so just think as you're trying to represent this as a third brand and as you're trying to increase ratings by bringing down people from main or bringing over people from main roster, you've got one of your commentary team, Booker T basically going when they're talking about maybe he's going to challenge Melo. He has bigger fish to fry. Like, basically, there are more important champions, which isn't... Not, which, I'm not saying it's not true. It could be, like, I guess, because he's busy. He's say more that. focused on Rollins, but... Maybe. Yeah, even still. Um. So, anyways, this was Heel's isolating trick for quite a while to start, and then a hot tag to Melo. Tandem moves by the baby faces. Uh, trick got a nice flurry against Priest that led to a near fall. Hayes got one against Balor, and then... Trick, Trick ends up taking a razor's edge from Priest onto the announce table. Mello's all alone, obviously. So Judgment Day get involved. Dom distracts the ref with a chair. Ripley throws Priest the money in the bank case, and he gets ready to use it. But then Dragunov shows up, gets on the apron, sort of tussling with, uh, over the case with Priest. And then Hayes accidentally knocks Dragunov off the apron. So that looks like how we're getting to that match, right? Even though it would be two baby faces, and it should be mm-hmm. awesome. And then that is enough to get South the Heaven coup de gras Judgment Day win after 12 minutes. I thought it was a good match, kind of a, to use a term I hate, overbooked finish a little bit. Surprised they made the choice to have Melo take the pin here, to be honest, but yeah, a, a, a little surprised. Trick didn't look out of place with these guys. He continues to get better. Um, and Braun Dragunov was considerably better than this, so I'm not sure why this was the main event, but it was pretty good anyways. Because Judgment Day. I guess. Impact, I didn't have a ton, but I did get some stuff. Impact, solid opener. It was Wentz returning. Although, oh my God, I know he's a heel. But do you know what if I say over-under on? So Yeah, I think. Like, so if I were to set the over-under, so basically I'm trying to set a line where it'll be kind of balanced people taking over and under of how many times Wentz did the Rascals, um, yeah, the salute in this match. And you had to pick, and I'm trying to get it as close to accurate as possible. I would say like 20, 20 and a half times. So that you, if you took, it's just you take a half, so there's no tie, yeah. right? Either you, someone's going to lose. So like constantly did it. Still good action, only seven minutes. Wentz uh, won. Miguel super kicked Ace Austin out on the floor. And then Wentz hit his headlock driver thing. I don't know if he has a name for it. The dirty original deeds. Dirty Deeds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good action, as you'd expect. Uh, but honestly, the rascal gesture hand salute thing was ridiculously obnoxious. And not like in a heel way, but in like, a, I don't know if I can watch you wrestle if you keep doing that way. <laughs> not, you know what I mean? Not in the yeah, right way. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I texted you while you were at work because I'm not a very responsible parent, I guess. Uh, what match was I saying? Like, I was Bailey, right? And Mike Bailey and Kevin, Kevin Knight. Knight. And I sent you like, Bailey and had a fantastic match and you're like yeah I heard and I put like fantastic right um so Kevin Knight always thought he was super athletic but like this was a terrific match I thought he's so like Bailey was doing everything full speed and super aggressively because um Knight is also so athletic he can just keep up with him and is just in the right place to take everything so Bailey doesn't have to ever wait for anything to set up he can just keep going kind of with reckless abandon. Mm-hmm. I thought it looked awesome. Uh, anyways, Tornado Kick, Ultima Weapon, Bailey wins after 13 minutes. I would actually say go check this out for a 13-minute TV match. And if you don't know a lot about Kevin Knight, I thought this was a fantastic match. And I would recommend you actually seek it out. Uh, a high spot, there was a really dark kind of almost like sexual vignette with Masha and Killer Kelly. Lots of like 
black leather and chains and stuff and Masha speaking in Could Ru- give off uh, the wrong. Right. It's uh, I think they're intentionally okay. pushing uh, that yeah, yeah. line. Okay. Um yeah, get, I think get people that's to watch. Killer Kelly's angle a little bit. Um is that she's dark and whatever. Anyways, Masha speaks Russian, Kelly speaks English. They're going after Coven and the tag team titles. I just like the vibe to it. It's kind of it's really different and I'd like both of these women and I just think bring them in. They're ass kickers, give them the titles and let them run with it. Um I even have unsure if it's a high spot or restful. I think I'm a high spot because of what it means. Ain't Alan Angel's cutting a promo by himself. Do I think the promo was amazing? No. But does it mean he's out of the design and moving on? Yes, I think, right? So leather jackets, sunglasses, and a dangly earring. A lot of, um, I think it's like Angel's Wings is his, uh, I think it's the in- the earring and some of his logo or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyways, he's not con- concerned about winning, but also the thrill. He's going to, sp- so I think it's going to be like, I'm going to do lots of cool stuff, but not really win. Seems to be the character he's setting himself up that's for, a good, right? That's a good character. Yeah. Uh, that's he's like gonna... uh, the gatekeeper. Who had like, right. and their name was the gatekeeper. It was I like forget. Jack Stars, I think, in UK. Yeah. He did. You're right. He's going to spread yeah. his wings like an angel would, and he's going to make his mark at Slammiversary, and X marks the spot. Kind of cheesy, but again, new direction for a guy that I think is really good in the ring, but kind of boring elsewhere. I already mentioned it. The Magnus segment was really good. Um, Who? Magnus. <laughs> he says he had done, e- basically, he'd done everything that there was to be done, and then he talked to Impact Management. They want him back, so he was like, fine, but I'm coming right into a world title program, and they said, that's okay. And he says, Shelly's always talking about this is his house and the house he built. And I thought this made sense, right? He's like, where were you when I beat Jeff Hardy for the title? Where were you when I retired Sting or retired Kurt Angle? Um, He also sent AJ Styles to New Japan. And he's like, Shelly spews out all this nonsense, but no one wants to upset him and his cult of weirdos, which I thought was interesting too. But Aldis doesn't care. He says at Slammiversary, he's going to end up on his back or his face, basically. I liked it. It was like this confident matter of fact, like, here's all my credentials. So stop saying this is your whatever. Like, I've done more stuff here than you. So what are you talking about kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Uh, He sounded like a top heel. And it honestly added a bit of interest for me in the match. And then the last thing I have is the main event. You were there for it. Uh, Good Canadian girl, Jody Threat, got uh, quite a bit of time, more than I thought, like 10 minutes-ish in a match challenging Deanna Perrazzo for the Knockouts Championship. Um, it was pretty good. Threat got a lot of offense in. Uh, she took her first loss, right? And she was undefeated mm-hmm. in Impact. With the, She tapped to the Venus. Well, she submitted to the Venus to yeah. Milo, which I love that move. Um, but So she's playing like the super aggressive, physical, strong woman. I thought the match was good. I don't think she's looked amazing. I want to say she has. I don't think she's looked amazing since coming. Because she's Canadian and we've seen her on the Indies, so I'm rooting for her. I don't think she's looked amazing, but she's good. So yeah. it was a good main, a nice spot for her to be in, right? Yeah, Exposure yeah. main event against the biggest uh, women's champion they have. Uh, and then after the match, it was just Savannah Evans, Giselle Shaw, it Jay Vidal. Like what, like all like the different feuds kind of meshing for run, uh, brawl like Everybody, thing. Death Dolls, Masha, Killer Kelly, Trinity. So any, all, basically all the women in any feud were out to end the show, uh, which again impact is trying to focus on the women right uh and right, i that's appreciate what you, I, that i kept i remember you said something about focusing on women i was like what was that wasn't WWE. they put them in the main that. event and with the go home segment ahead of their one of their major pay-per-views right slam anniversary. it was all focused on the women so they're trying you can argue about how effective they are or whatever all you want right but they're trying to at mm-hmm. least so anyways that's all i had what do you have for smackdown uh, the only thing I had from SmackDown was... Was this the week where the first 40 minutes were a bloodline thing? That was last week. Oh, last week. Okay, sorry. Yeah, because I think th- I heard they cut Carlito for that. Oh, yeah. I thought it was, it was like 35, 40 minutes. Yeah, it was like... I've heard compelling. I've heard mixed it. reviews on yeah. it, to be honest. Um, So Escobar won the first U.S. Invitational I saw. Four-way. Happy for um, him. He faces the other winner in a couple weeks, I think. Um, I was personally hoping for Butch, uh, but Escobar works as well. Um, I could see him getting the title shot, although maybe L.A. Knight will if he wins the other one. Yeah. So, but I think that's good for him. So yeah, Escobar is awesome. It just means there's a decent chance you're gonna get a good match down the road. Mm-hmm. And then the high spot from Rampage was that Dark Order promo. I like that they it was that after all the guys like Vance and Angels and Grace and leaving them, in addition to Hangman ditching them, was finally built up to them. Just like it's it's reached a point. Right. My only complaint, because I liked it too, is it seems like on one hand you're saying we're tired of people leaving us, and then at the end it kind of feels like they're back to recruiting again. Yeah, I but, would have rather they're like we're closing the doors and it's us that's three fair. and we're just gonna start kicking ass now. 
That's what I was hoping. Well, for. I I don't mind as like they'll you, recruit, but then it's like. But how do you go like everyone we recruit leaves us? Right, hey, we're recruiting. I I I think that yeah, that's a fair point. But I feel like it's also kind of like because when they were recruiting Hangman, it was like for a while he was very clearly like yeah eh, on it. And I feel like now it'd be like if that were to happen, now it'd be like you're against us or you're with us. So it's like if they don't want in, you're you're yeah. dead, right? Yep. So I think it's kind of like that, and I think that's fair too. Um, but I really liked it. Um, Me too. I don't know if it's a rebrand completely or just a new dark order. I like it. Uno has potential as leader, at least on the mic. Like he'll never be big in ring, but like he can have some solid matches, and then he can speak for them. This like, was he's I really felt great. like this was them sort of being like it's fairly equal. I know yeah. Uno did speak last, but they each got a chance to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I really and it felt it, like though. Silver was no, not Silver. Reynolds was yeah with it, a different look, a little bit, a little bit. And if they do turn heel, uh, this is a good way to go about it. I think they are, and I liked it too. Yeah, cool. And that's it. I feel I said to you, I feel like it's more like. It feels like going back to the Brody Lee iteration of things, yeah, so to speak. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, that's going to bring us to I the end. I guess Anna J left them too, but who cares about that? Of our uh, three-year anniversary podcast, we got her over two hours, buddy. Two oh five yeah. about to hit right now. So. Be shorter. So yeah, we're uh, just stay tuned. Um, appreciate any listeners we have. We picked up a few over three years. Not that we market ourselves at all, so it's still kind of a hobby, but. Maybe we'll get on threads and get some promotion out there and try and pick up some viewers, or sorry, listeners. Uh, but thanks for taking some time out of your week to listen to us talk about wrestling. We'll be back with 157 next Saturday. We'll try we'll to get start NXT up off the ground. Getting an NXT episode off the ground, so keep an eye out for that wherever you follow us, subscribe, whatever. Um, and yeah, so anyways, definitely see you back here next Saturday. And until then, everybody, take care. <laughs>